Welcome to the F Word on the menu tonight for our main course of roasted pheasant with braised cabbage and bread sauce. Is Sarah Beanie's chocolate brownie recipe better than mine? I desperately, desperately, <laughs> desperately need to win. win. Trust me. It's time to get the kids ready to say goodbye to the turkeys. We're I'm eating them for Christmas. <laughs> and Big Brother's Davina McCall is in for dinner. Can you just say the word sex in my ear. You can't do things like that to me. OK, guys, yes? Are we ready, yes? Kerry, you ready? Yeah. Serious face on? Yeah, let's go. OK, on order, six covers table two, six um, haricot bean soup, make or six pheasants. That's cool. Let's go. Pheasants in, please. Let's go. Now, tonight's staff is a rich, sumptuous haricot bean soup with tiger prawns. Now, these beans have been soaked overnight in water. And what that does, it actually softens the bean and makes them cook a lot quicker. In with the bacon, onion and carrot. And once you brought it to the boil quickly, cook out for about 25 to 30 minutes. Now, tiger prawns has its own built-in cooking gauge. When they're raw, they're grey. When they're cooked, they're nice and pink. We cook the prawns for 30 seconds in boiling water and vegetables. We call that a court bouillon. Now, prawns are the perfect choice for a seafood beginner because they're nice and sweet, slightly meaty and so easy to cook. We peel them from the shell when they're warm because it's a lot easier when they're warm. Get the tail and push with your finger and thumb and the whole thing just pops out. Once the beans have been drained of its stock, just take a couple of handfuls out because that's going to be in with the prawns and the mushrooms at the bottom of the soup. The rest of the beans into the mixer. A couple of ladles of bean puree into the pan. We add our chicken stock and bring it up to the boil. Once we start to boil it, we're going to add a touch of cream. Now this comes to the boil, for the exciting part, is where we start to froth the soup and make it really nice and light. It's a bit of a chef's thing. You don't have to froth it up, but it's just a way of making it a little bit lighter. And if you don't have a stick mix, then just serve it as a normal white bean soup. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. That's it. OK, take your ladle out, give it a little buzz. Carry. Give it in the blessing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. come on. F me. Now, tonight in the kitchen, my three commie chefs are Phil, Russell and Kerry. They've already survived one round in the F-word kitchen, and whoever stays tonight will come back to battle it out for a job in one of my restaurants. OK, why are we making two pans? I want three portions. Yep. The soup's made to order. You've got four portions there, he's got four portions. Why don't you do the garnish? Yeah. Yeah? And you do the soup. But no one's talking. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. And you're just making no <laughs> sense whatsoever. So yeah. talk to one another. Yeah. Check the seasoning, please. Taste it, Kerry, come on. And, Anne, set the garnish up here, Anne, so we can start serving it. Oh, uh, yeah, Gordon. Yeah? Wait. Yeah, that's nice. After this table. Yeah, Gordon. The garnish for the soup are the tiger prawns. Along with the tiger prawns, we've got these little Japanese samuji mushrooms. And we're just going to saute the mushrooms off. Get your cloth on the front here. That's it. OK. Get some colour on the mushrooms first before you put the prawns in. Now, we're using a Japanese mushroom, but to be quite frank, any mushroom will work lovely with this. 30 seconds for the prawns. Get your beans. Put your beans in with the prawns. And there we have a really nice garnish. Right, now they've soaked off the garnish. Yeah? Just yeah. season it with some fresh parsley. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Can we put it in no, the no, just listen to me. me. Shut up and just listen, that's all. If you listen, you're going to do well, but... Fresh parsley, then from there over to the bowl. Let's go. OK. Take your garnish and be generous with the garnish. Your prawns, your beans and your mushrooms into the plate. No, just three portions. Come on, Kerry, please. Wake Can up. Just three, three portions. One, two, three. You're on your fourth I'm bowl. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Gordon. So you take half the froth and half the soup and you pour it gently over the garnish, yeah? 
and then you go back to the beginning yeah. and put a little bit more froth in there. Can you just concentrate for me? Yeah. Yeah, and try to wake up a little bit. It'll make life a lot easier for you, the customers, and me, yes? Yeah. Good girl. It's not difficult, you know that. I know. Now, this is a perfect winter soup, great for the cold nights ahead, and check out the F-Word website for the recipe. Service, please. <laughs> I'll see you. <laughs> Well, it, it was delicious soup. The prawns, I'm not sure how they were cooked, but they had a beautiful flavour. Thumbs up to Gordon, really, I'm afraid. Sorry, big suck up, but absolutely. He's gorgeous and so is his food. So what, can, what more can I say? That's why it was easier. Ladies, good evening. Hello, how are good you? Good to see you. Yeah, very well indeed, thank you. I good love to watching see you. you in there. How was your soup? It was very, very good. Yes? Yes, very Not too good, rich. thank you. No, I love no. this food. Do you cook at home? I sort of share it because really? we've got little kids, so whoever puts the kids to bed doesn't do the cooking. Really? I'm quite good with a, with a uh -huh. recipe, yep. but I'm not... My husband's got the flair, Serious. I haven't got the flair. And what would you say his pièce de résistance is? What's his favourite dish? Um, my favourite dish that he does yep. is it's um, just sea bass, baked sea bass, and he... he um, he does put sort of some grilled vegetables and then he'll put them in the tray with the seat bass, open the foil and put it in. Sounds a little bit like Jamie Oliver to me, I that have. one, no? Is he using... Isn't no? that a swear word? <laughs> We're not allowed to say that anymore. <laughs> You're not on a particular diet or anything no, no, like no. that, are you? No, I don't diet. No. How do you keep so fit? Work out. Work out. I mean, I basically eat what I want. Yeah. Um, because I work out. And that's one very good reason to work out, isn't it? But, but no. So you can eat what you want. <laughs> yeah, Yay! exactly. But uh, have you ever been on a diet? I did that. I did the Atkins. Procedure. Worked brilliantly. I lost six pounds in two weeks. Amazing. Sorry. But I was obsessed yeah. by bread. Like, if somebody picked up that piece of bread yeah. over there, I'd see you at I 500 bread. paces, and I'd be like, oh, my God, they're eating bread! <laughs> really? you know, and then I'd say, OK, I'll have Sundays off. So I'd start eating sweets and bread at 7 in the morning, and I'd literally be like, pasta, 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 pasta. You know, and until the end of the day. It was just ridiculous. There is one negativity uh, against the sort of Atkins diet, you know, because it's not very good for your sex life. Did you just nice say time? the word sex in my ear? You said yeah, the word yeah, sex no. in my ear. I mean, does it have an In my effect? ear. So you can't do things like that to me. Oh, I'll tell you what, it does it have an effect on... It lowers your libido. On... Well, <laughs> I couldn't poo. I mean, if you're going to say sex, oh, let's God, say poo. Yeah. I couldn't poo for ages because you're... It was awful because you don't eat vegetables. Okay. And with that, hello, heinous breath. Yeah. So obviously your sex but... life's going to go out the window because you can't <laughs> snog. And if you can't snog, you're not going to have sex. <laughs> you took me there, Gordon. Next on the menu, along with our main course of pheasant with a fantastic bread sauce. The commies start to crack under pressure. You're going to kill someone, you can't serve raw bacon. And just when I thought things couldn't get any worse for Giles Corrin, we sent him down a sewer. Chefs of the world who would love to see me disappear under there. OK, one minute for the cabbage. How long for you, Ange? One minute, please. One minute. Let's go, Russell. We can start plating up in 30 seconds, yes? Welcome back to the F Word. Time now for the main course. Roasted pheasant, braised cabbage, bread sauce with devils on horseback. Pheasant. The secret behind cooking this bird is actually lining the breast with some streaky bacon, because it really is a very lean bird with hardly any fat. Thai. Not too tight. A, it keeps the bacon on, and B, it actually keeps the bird in a really good shape. Hot pan, olive oil. Season. Time. Pheasant, nice hot pan, streaky bacon, thyme, straight into the oven. Bread sauce. Thyme. Salt. Pepper. Blitz. Hot pan. Butter. Onion. On the heat. Cloves. Star anise. Bay leaf. The big daddy. Black pepper. Pull in the china shop. This is the one that actually brings it all together. Sweat. Milk. Let it infuse. Bring it to the boil. Slowly. Back to pheasant. Base. That keeps the pheasant really nice and moist. Finish the sauce. That milk is amazing. Bread crumbs in. Butter. Now we have a really nice, smooth, smart, sexy bread sauce. 
Okay, pheasant. Rest 15 minutes. And you turn it upside down. And all the juices from the top of the carcass run into the bottom of the breast. And so by the time it's cooled down, it's full of flavour. And the whole leg just falls away. Delicious. Pheasant with bread sauce. Done. Now, with the pheasant, I'm also serving some red cabbage. And we, we all grew up with this stuff, pickled in a jar. But this is done in a very simple form. It started on top of the stove. It's got butter in with it. And then we season it with brown sugar over the cabbage. And then a tablespoon of vinegar. Add that to the brown sugar. Salt, pepper. And then we braise it in the oven for about 45 to 50 minutes so it cooks nice and slowly, absorbs the vinegar, the sugar caramelises it and makes it a really nice, tasty cabbage. Now, I'm serving devils and horseback with a pheasant and that's basically a prune that's been wrapped in bacon. The sweetness and the saltiness of the bacon goes brilliantly with a pheasant. Cocktail stick, keep the bacon on there, into a pan. Get some really good colour on the bacon, gets nice and crispy and that crispy bacon with a sweet prune is amazing. Now, don't forget to take the cocktail sticks out before you serve them. There it is. Yeah, five pheasant, one ravioli. Yeah, the journalist table. Watch that table. There's Joan, journalist. So the pheasant first, then the ravioli, OK? OK, be very, very careful, yeah? Now, earlier today, I set the commies a challenge, and that was to try and separate the men from the boys. Challenge time. We've got a table of vegetarians in this evening. Now, vegetarian food has to be as, just as exciting as the normal menu. So on this table in front of us, we've got uh, an array of vegetables. I want you to think of a vegetarian filling for a ravioli. Think about it, spinach, ricotta, sauteed mushrooms, rocket, basil. You know, just have a look. You've got half an hour. Let's go, yes? <laughs> What's going through your mind? What are you doing? Cheese. Cheese. Work and talk at the same time. We're against the clock. We'd like a fully booked restaurant, yes? Not just about your cheese and tomatoes. So, what are you going to do? Cheese, tomato, mustard. Mozzarella. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that sounds nice. And you're going to season it with fresh basil? Yeah, basil. Okay, hurry up, yes. Right, Russell, what are you doing? I'm thinking of an open top ravioli. Open top ravioli. Nice. And what's in the open top ravioli? Right, I'm thinking sun dried tomatoes. Yep. And then I've also got a uh, roasted pepper going on there. Just okay. give it that flavour, just get, get it going. I'm going to put some uh, blue cheese into it as well. Blue cheese as well? Yeah. And as you know, we haven't got all day, you know that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so move your arse, yeah? Yep, yes, sir. Okay, Phil. What are you going to do? I'm going to do a tomato and basil with a buffalo and mozzarella. Okay. And you put the uh, mozzarella in when it's cooled down so it doesn't yeah. melt? Just so it doesn't melt. So we can just keep those that, that solid Texture. cubes there, yeah. So as it starts to cook in the ravioli, it just slightly melts inside? That's it, yeah. Okay, good. Looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. A taste tonight. Well, we'll find out, won't we, Sue? <laughs> OK, guys, that's it. Let's go. Carry on the hot plate. Russell, let's go. Phil, Kerry, there. Come on, stand next to it. Right, uh, Russell. Pasta stone cold. You didn't even heat the pasta up. Hey, chef. Phil, he started blanching his pasta, and you followed suit, rather than you know, remaining as an individual, because your filling looked nice. Unfortunately, so far I've got stone cold pasta, overcooked pasta. Let's hope the last one at least has got something. What's that? The raw sage leaf. Yeah. yeah it went, I mean, no. Yeah. We only put on a plate what we can eat. Yeah. Never forget that. And look at that. You can see why I don't change <laughs> nappies. <laughs> Insepid, bland, and nothing what I asked for. A simple ravioli. Unfortunately, I'm not going to serve any of them in the restaurant for okay. vegetarians. You know that. Tonight, get your shit together. Yeah? Clear down. Thank right, let's you. go, Kerry, please, yes? Uh, four pheasant away now, Three. yes? Four pheasant away now, let's go. Yeah, four, yes, yeah, chef. Yeah. I don't understand what you're doing, Kerry. You're dropping your spoon, you're putting it back in your pocket. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Do you need any more on these? No, why are you asking me when you're putting it on? Come on. Because I think we do. Pheasant, please, now. Pheasant. Come on, this is where it's going to get really tough now, yes? Yeah. 
Down. Let's go. Go, it's not cooked. It's raw. Oh. The bacon's raw, for God's sake. Oh. Kerry, come here a minute, you. It's raw. It is raw, young lady. You're going to kill someone. You can't serve raw bacon. Not good enough. Not good that? enough. Take your apron off and go. No. Forget it. Oh. Out. Oh. Right, and start the table again, please. God's sake. And start the table again. <laughs> now. It will soon be time to slaughter the turkeys. I've been trying to get the kids ready to say goodbye. We're a week away from slaughtering the turkeys the children have been fattening up for Christmas. I'm getting worried that the kids are getting too attached. Oh, well done. Let's have a look. Is that Anthony? Tilly loves cuddling Anthony. And Megan's been keeping her own video diary. Julie have been even more grumpy than yesterday. I asked Janice Horton Wallace from the Turkey Club UK how to deal with it. Her suggestion was rather radical. You may have to consider possibly just keeping a couple back so that oh. then they, they, they think, well, OK, yeah, those go, but we will still have some turkeys here. Will we get any turkey eggs? They start um, mating properly in January or February, and then the girls usually start laying eggs about four weeks after the mating process. They're very good layers and the eggs are wonderful in baking. Really? Oh, they are definitely worth trying. Like a duck yeah. egg or...? They're not as strong as a duck egg. Mm -hmm. They're slightly larger than a chicken's egg. But they, uh, because of the extra albumum, yeah. they're very good in pastry sauces and things like that. And what about her indoors? I've got to explain that to her. Oh, she'll love eating their eggs. I'm not that convinced, and I don't think Tana will be very enthusiastic either. She mentioned if the kids are getting really sort of attached, there is a strong possibility we could keep them, or maybe keep half of them and cook half. I think we've always been very honest with them, and this is what's happening, and I think they are prepared for that, and we stick to what we originally planned. I'm you know, happy to go along with what we set out to do, but I'm just asking you to think about an alternative. We've done your project, I've supported you in that, we've fattened up the turkeys, and now you're backtracking because yes. you like them. Delia's shaking because you're shouting, so you're upsetting. Let me go and sit over with her. You I'm go right sit with Delia. I can't believe so, Come on, Delia. Come on. There have been times when it's really driven me crazy having the turkeys here, all the mess and everything like that, but it's been a fantastic learning curve for the children. <laughs> We've only got a couple of days left of the turkeys and then they're going to be slaughtered, so I thought let's throw a turkey party. They can explain to their friends exactly what's going on and also it'll really put it clear in their minds that this is happening and they won't sort of wake up surprised to know that it's the final day. We're eating not, them for Christmas. 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 Which one are you going to eat first for dinner? Whoa. Oh, we're going to eat one that we... Oh, you're really shocked. Yeah, we're going to kill all of them. Are you going to kill Jack's turkey first? Yeah, he is so fat. The kids actually seem fine about killing the birds, but I need to know whether I've got enough turkey to feed the diners at the restaurant. So Peter the vet's going to do a final weigh-in. What are we doing? Wait, 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 wait. Why? So we can you find out if they're fat. Fat? How fat they are. We want them very fat for Christmas, don't we? That's six kilos. Yeah. You need help lifting that one up. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, Nigella. It's 14. Okay, who's got the balance? 20. 10. Who's next? Gary! Celia! Why do I always catch the top? You're very good at this. All right, Ainsley. I know. Seven kilos? Yeah. Who would like a sandwich? Me! Matt, how are you? Good evening, Chef. Good, to see you? You. Good yeah. to see you. Good to see you too. Not only you're a wine writer, but you're actually Jamie Oliver's sommelier. Yep. You're his wine waiter yep. at 15. 
Yep. No, yeah. you bought some wines. Absolutely. That you thought were going to go well. Do you know what? Please the tell thing... me they're not all Australian. <laughs> there's, not, yeah. there's not one Australian. There's not one wine. Australian. But do you know what? I think when it comes yes. to kind of food and wine matching, uh -huh. um, you know, I think a lot of people kind of get unnecessarily kind of, yeah. you know, confused stressed. with it and stressed with it, Absolutely. and they, they tend to think that you know the best matches end up being, yeah. you know, the most expensive matches. Yeah, and it's not crazy. always the case. Definitely, definitely not. And um, here, I mean, this is the one word to describe this wine is that it, it's sexy. You know, sexy. sexy. You get kind of that sort of um, dark yeah, cherry. Yeah. Get dark cherry. You get a little bit of spice, yeah. but straight away you're getting things like cinnamon, cinnamon cloves. Cinnamon. Yeah, absolutely. You know, star anise. All the kind of things that you use when you're yeah. cooking the pheasant out there. All those kind of ingredients are starting to come through, and I guess that's one of the key things when it comes to food and wine matching. Yep. You want to look for kind of like similar sort of weight yes. between yeah. food and wine. Absolutely. You also want to look at similar similar kind of intensity of flavour and keep it sexy. Absolutely. Now, um, you're highly competitive. Yes. I am. I've got a test for you. Okay. Three of the most extraordinary wines. I want you to try and tell me what you think they are. Here we go. I'm not saying anything. It's going to be something like Blue Nun. Five quid, under. Mate. Five pound and under. Absolutely on the nose. Blue Nun. <laughs> well done. Uh, one of my favourites. The heat is on, big boy. You should always trust your first instincts. And for me, Straight kind away. of like, first thing I sort of smell is kind yes. of cedar. You know, it, uh -huh. it's, it's got, there's a fair bit of oak in there. There's a fair bit of fruit weight as well. Uh -huh. um, dark plum, dark fruit. You know, yes. straight away, I'm kind of thinking big, rich, full body grape variety. Uh -huh. Probably thinking New World as well. So. Really? Okay. Little taste. Huh? <laughs> Now the heat is on, and you can see he's looking nervous. Come on! That's turbocharged. There's some that's weight, and muscle, and intensity Big behind time. that. that that's Big kind time. of like it's awesome Shiraz or Cabernet from probably from Australia. Here we go. Oh, oh! Well done. Did I say awesome Shiraz? Well done. Awesome Shiraz. Well done. Thanks very much. Oh, fantastic. 98, great. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Instantly, what you think? What? When I look at this wine? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing the colour. The colour's nowhere near, near as deep as, the, as uh -huh. the previous wine. Sight's kind of probably the least important of all your three senses, um, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, you can close your eyes and... That's how I always find it. You're a lot easier. What are you getting? What's We're talking about that? a very different league right. between that wine and this wine. OK. So, so what it's not giving away much on the nose. It's pretty no? flat, pretty dull. Uh-huh. Soft, simple. It's even yeah. a little bit corked, Gordon. I can't sure. believe you put on a wine that's just. A little I bit would not do that well. to you. Come on. You think it's, it's corked? just a little bit corked. I'm not going to argue Can with I you. But, I mean, I don't mind fighting, but that's definitely not corked. A definitely little not bit. Corked. You do the cooking. I'll do the wine. So, oh, <laughs> oh God, taxi. Okay, have a little taste. God, it's probably going to be amazing Bordeaux or something like that, isn't it? Three, two, one. What's the yeah, answer? It's Bordeaux. It's Cabernet-based wine from Bordeaux. Uh-huh. Yeah. What would you pay for it? How much would you pay for that? 30, 40 quid. 30, 40 quid. You've been eating far too many kangaroos, you know that. That was a thousand pound bottle of Petrus. Oh. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> I told Matthew, you. Look. For goodness oh. sake. A thousand pound bottle go. of Petrus, 1992, my friend. Oh, it's, 90, it's 92. For well, look, you know, sake. I'm Australian, oh. I have cheap taste. Oh, shit. <laughs> Was it, was it meatloaf that said <laughs> two out of three ain't bad? Next on the menu, it's pudding time. Sarah Beanie takes me on with a chocolate brownie. Also, I think that putting nuts in it is a yes. bit like putting leeks in macaroni cheese. Oh, really? So it's just wrong. Giles goes in the sewer. Oh, it's disappearing into human shit. And Davina has to sing for her supper. Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. Okay, uh, Phil, Russell, come here. Yeah? One's gone. Yes? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. He's yeah. tried to put raw bacon on a plate. Now, my brigade are leaving, and you two are going to run the F word restaurant. You've got a table of four, and you've got a table of four. Yeah. Yes? Hey, everything from bread sauce to cabbage to pheasant. Yeah? Mark, out. Yep. And out. Okay. Neil, bye-bye. Let's go. Come on, Russell. Wakey, wakey. Bacon's burning. She's already gone home on the back of that. Let's go. Come on, big boy. 
Nice and crispy. Little touch of butter in there, Phil, to finish it off with. Chef. Phil, you got table 10. Ready, Chef. Yes. And Russell, you got table 14, yes? Yes, Chef. Well, you know one's talking to one another. Hello, we're in the same restaurant. Russell, you ready, Russ? Yeah, how long you got? I'm ready, mate. You're here. Move, let's go. Yeah, I'm looking for a presentation, yeah? Each and every plate looking exactly the same. Let's go. Stand by, table 14. Stand by. Look at each other's plates. Check that we've got the same things going on. The same size portions, yes? Yeah. Come on. Don't forget, it's the same restaurant, yes? Come on. Yeah. Pheasant on first. They're last. That's the garnish, yes? There you go. Think about what you're doing. Come on, Russell. Yes, chef. Put the tray down and work with two hands. It's twice as quick. Yes, chef. Voila. Right. Oil. Take your time. Don't spoil it now, yes? Gently, gently, gently. Let's go. Are you happy? Dirty plate. Yes, that bit. I'm not happy with that. Hair there on the pheasant. Pull it out. Yeah. Come on, wake up. You've got four eyes. Let's go. Up, go. Table 14. Go. Right, come here, both of you. Well done. That's what it's like in the real world. That's one table each out of 20 tonight. Clear down, start again. Well done. Yes, Chef. Hello there. Nice <laughs> to see you. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. How are you? Good, very well. You enjoyed the pheasant, yes? I did enjoy yes. the pheasant. Although I've got something for you here. Go on. There's a bit of shot. That's great news. Yeah, so it was really, really That means really, it's not really one of those really posh shot. birds, it's a real bird. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah. The combination of everything was really good, but the, the, the pheasant was just cooked to perfection. Absolute perfection. Really lovely. Hi. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, how was the pheasant? It was very nice. Yes? Very nice. It oh. could have been a little bit more veg, I felt. Cool, dear, oh dear. Well, I'm just saying. You don't need more veg with that pheasant. And the devils on horseback and the red sauce and the braised The cabbage. devils on horseback were, were pretty superb, yeah. Wonderful. The way that it was cooked this evening was fantastic. It fell off the bone. And the fact that the plate itself isn't actually loaded with, with superfluous vegetables as well made it very, very nice. Time for pudding. This week, Sarah Bean is going to try and beat me with her favourite dessert, chocolate brownie. Now, there's 100 recipes of chocolate brownies, and I'm doing something quite sort of uh, unique, some just delicious. We're finishing it this time with some little pecans. But this is not a big tray of chocolate brownie. They're going to be done in little blini pans. We're going to butter them, line them with chocolate, and cook them individually, almost like a little sort of pancake, but pancake chocolate brownie. This is a children's chocolate brownie, because I don't think you should put extra bits in. It should just be pure chocolate brownie. This is really cheap, so you can make it, if you're having masses of people to a party, you can make it for loads of people. We had it at our wedding, actually. <laughs> not that I'm a cheapskate or anything. So, get your brush and lightly brush the inside of the pan. Now, all it is is a block of chocolate. Break it in half and just grate. And just pour the chocolate in there. And then roll it round. Right, Sarah, how are we doing? This is cocoa, sugar and flour. Yep. And then this is the eggs and you just pour it in and there. It's and that's it? That's it, yeah. So well, it no, tastes great. I'm sure it does. Now, no chocolate in there? No. And it's got, it's got cocoa powder. Just cocoa powder? In. Yeah, and, oh, and then I have to grease the tin. And that looks like something you've nicked from your granny? Um, yeah, that's yeah? a general And then that goes in there. <laughs> and how long does that cook for? 25 minutes or maybe a bit more if it doesn't look cooked. Yeah, because it should be nice and crispy on the outside and soft yeah, and gooey in the middle. Yeah, gungy. Gungy. That's the word. And... You're a lady who likes pressure. You've I got do. 37 guests coming round on I... Boxing Day. Christmas Day. Christmas Day. Yes. That's a yeah. big table, that, 37. That, that is a big table. And you were cooking yeah. not single-handedly, surely? Well, sort of single-handed. I've got this turkey that's kind of... Huge. Huge. So have you got lots of Christmas? Uh, I think we've got about um, 18 or 20. Hey, that's just as bad. I know. Crazy. So yeah. do you do lots of entertaining, then? I'm not very good at the dinner party thing, you know that. It's not the kind of thing I, um, I really enjoy doing, to be totally honest. So this is why I couldn't be a cook, because I think this is taking ages and it's really boring. I'm thinking, God, hurry up. How do you know so much about property? I've got a building company. I do a boy's job, you see. You okay. do a girl's job, I do a boy's job. I do a girl's job. Yeah, that's the whole gripe. I wish women would get back in there and do their job. I... You know that. <laughs> women do make the best chefs, you know that. I know, well, obviously. Women it's do the... everything best. No, no, no. Well, not quite everything. <laughs> Hello. Not quite everything. You're a bit of a matchmaker, aren't you? I am. It is a bit of an obsession of mine. It always has been, actually, which... Serious. Um, now, did you do that over food? Yeah, no, well, the best place to meet someone is over food and booze, isn't it? Food and booze, yes. Yeah, st stick food and booze uh -huh. and a few Can't... single people together and they're going to get married. And what about someone like our resident food critic? I mean, is there, a, is there a woman out there that's mad enough to sort of date him? How would you describe him? 
moany, whingy, beardy, short ass. I think he definitely gets someone. He definitely gets someone. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping egg. <laughs> now, the chocolate and the butter's melted. I've whisked the eggs lightly. I've folded them in. Sarah's is going to be slightly gungy in the centre, she said. <laughs> Sounds very ominous. Um, and mine, of course, is going to be lined with, like, chocolate buttons and these little things, pecans. I have to say, at this stage, without getting too carried away, a damn sight more appetising than Sarah's. <laughs> Mind you, I said that about the trifles last week as well, didn't I? Also, I think that putting nuts in it is a yes. bit like putting leeks in macaroni cheese. Oh, really? So it's just wrong. It's like put... ruining the purity. I'm now just going to lift that out and put them in to the moulds. And then, hopefully, we'll be ready. So only fill the mould up two-thirds because they're going to rise slightly and then we leave it nice and soft and gooey in the centre. And those chocolate buttons, hopefully, will be intact but slightly runny. I could have refurbished a five-bedroom house in the time it takes to melt some butter. How frustrating. This one's going to eat it and you've just got washing up to do. Whilst you're uh, pregnant, OK, and yeah. obviously my wife's been pregnant three times, I put weight on to make her feel happy. Does it happen oh, the same with your husband? such a sweetie. Does he put weight on to make um, you feel... Sort he of is, actually. ..less fat in bed? <laughs> no, he does still does say, he? good God, you're fat, every time I have no clothes on. Serious. So, which oh, is true, let's yeah. be honest. No, I'm going to stay confident now, because I'm not cooked. Now, let me have a quick look at yours. OK. Just like the bike sheds. You can look at mine and let me look at yours. <laughs> yeah. Cheeky. That's nice. Is that... I've got to say, you, yours does look like you cook for a living and mine does look like I don't. And I desperately, desperately, <laughs> desperately need to win. need to win. Okay, to win. OK, here we go. It'll taste great, though. Um, I'm sure it will, you know that. Hello, Giles. Hello, Gordon. Are you well? No, I'm, I'm not bad at all. Yeah. I'm happy with it. at least I've been fed. You've been fed. Yeah. Now, what have you been up to this week? Um, I've been down a sewer. Um, I'm so used to the healthy, hygienic places like professional kitchens. God, bins, squirrels, kebabs. And, yeah. and, but no, but that, that was because I was investigating food. Here I was investigating quite the opposite. Brilliant. I was I was up to my up to my elbows in uh, in shit. Um, yeah, and it's, it's it's because of the, the fat that gets thrown away. Fat is a huge problem in Britain. I'm not talking about fat people. I'm talking about cooking fat. When you flush them away down the sewers, as we all do sometimes, they'll cool, solidify and harden and cause blockages. And when that happens, we're in big trouble. Last year alone, we spent £15 million clearing our pipes and 3,000 properties were flooded as a result of blockage. With Christmas approaching, the water companies are expecting a 25% increase in the amount of fat that we're flushing down our drains, which means that we're going to be adding, over Christmas, to an already existing problem in the underbelly of our cities. But what does that really mean? I'm not dressed up like this just because it looks sexy. It's because I'm going to go down there and find out. Well, I understand the issues about this fat being thrown away, but it looks all fairly harmless when it goes down the sink. So. What does it look like here? I don't understand. Well, you'll soon see, Giles, when you get round this corner here. Yeah? Oh, it smells nasty now. If I drown or something, you're no, going to do you, mouth to mouth? You won't drown. What's this? That's, uh, that's the fat, what you're going to go into. That's fat? Yeah, it's that's fat. That's fat out of people's kitchens, gone down the sink and... Yeah. Oh, no. No, oh, and there's things ah. sitting in it. Ah, oh, shit, and it's everywhere. Cheers for that. If I need a radioactive anti-thingy <laughs> death suit. <laughs> Just be careful. Have, have you... Oh, God! The chefs of the world who would love to see me disappear under there. Ah! Oh, it's disappearing into human shit. Oh, it's some <laughs> sanitary towel. Why am I doing this? I don't know. <laughs> there it is. That's your fat. That's your turkey roast. Your lovely grannies and grandchildren come round. You cook that up for them and you toss it down the sink without a thought. It comes down here, solidifies. And people like Kenny have to walk up and down and they're shoveling it up and throwing it away. It's absolutely disgusting. I'm. I'm. I'm I probably knew that already. I didn't need to come down here to prove it, but we'll do it again. Uh, well, this is the third shower I've had since I got back from the sewer, and I haven't got close to removing the smell. Having seen the scale of the problem, though, I promise you I'm determined to find out what we can do about it. So I've discovered a clever little device you can use at home. Fat traps, which is a thing like this that you leave by the sink. Instead of throwing your used fat down the sink, you just pour it into there. This manner. You put some nuts in it, you give it a shake to make a lovely little feast, and you put it out for the birds. Or, in fact, if you haven't got one of those, you can do the same thing with a, with a baked bean tin. Apparently, if we all do this, if we all use these fat traps and stop throwing our stuff down the sinks, we can make a huge difference to the state of our sewers and drains. Having said that, restaurants and fast food joints are the biggest fatty villains, and they also need to shape up. By law, they're obliged to have waste fat collected, although thousands of them are still illegally pouring it down the drain. But some councils are fighting back, 
They're collecting the fat for free and turning it into diesel for cars. So I've got a, a gallon here of delightful waste cooking oil from the F-Word restaurant, which I've brought into my garden because it's the last thing I want in my house, uh, because I, I've got a fellow here who reckons he can turn it into, uh, into car fuel. Yeah, what we're doing is we're converting it into biodiesel. And so how much will our gallon of F-Word waste cooking fat make? How much diesel? One gallon of used cooking oil, you'll get one gallon of biodiesel. So do you need to do anything to the engine of your car to make this stuff work in it? If you've got a properly produced biodiesel, it, it's a direct replacement. You don't have to modify things. You're saying I just throw into the drum this used fat, yeah? Literally pour it in. Slightly green. Oh. <laughs> and then I just hit, hit this, this green button here, pump on. Correct. Is that it? That's as easy as No, that. I need to add caustic soda and methanol. Okie dokie. So I pop that in the hopper here and start pumping the methanol over. And how long does this take to make? It takes about an hour mixing. And, and it's that easy, and then hey presto, we have biodiesel. Hey presto, you have biodiesel, pump it into your car and you can drive on. And here it comes, real diesel. Although that said, uh, I think I'm first going to have to put it in the car and go for a drive just to make absolutely sure it works. You think I can just put this straight in a car, do you? Just pour it straight in. In it goes. Righty-ho, then it's the moment of truth. Will the car start? Hurrah! It has. I didn't believe it would. It's amazing. It smells, a, it smells more like a chip shop than a car, though. Um, I have a, a gallon of Gordon's used fat in this car, uh, and given that it's as good as diesel, uh, that will get me, if I head north from my home, as far as Luton. Well, lucky me. Excited? Yeah, yeah, this yes. is going to be fantastic. This is, uh... I'm actually slightly nervous. Oh, no, is it burnt? Well, no, it's got a nice crack on the top. Ooh, ooh, ooh. OK, now, how are you going to serve yours? I'm going to serve it in slices, like a cake. Yeah, you just want, you know, like send it like that and give them a spoon. <laughs> yes. But the difficulty oh. is you have to make them with all sort of posh stuff in, don't you? Not at all. Oh, Chocolate yes, buttons, that's not posh. <laughs> I'm finish mine with a touch of creme fraiche. Oh. This is called a blob. That's called a blob, nice. <laughs> Are you happy with that? Jean-Baptiste, um, take Sarah's upstairs first, OK? Yes? Yes. And if they don't like it, we can line their lofts with some new cavity wall insulation. <laughs> OK? Up. Yeah, can I just say, it's bloody heavy. <laughs> Honestly, it feels like one of your breeze blocks from one of your buildings. Hello, how are you guys? Hello. Hello. Voici, so Danny, this is number one. I like the texture on the top as well, like mm -hmm. the kind of crunchy. It's kind of nice mm. and gooey in the middle, and it's like nice kind of crunchy mm. outside. It does, yeah. it kind of, it just drips really over your tongue, doesn't it, when the top bit feeling? Might, it might be slightly too gooey, actually, just if I was going to add some constructive criticism to that. Mm, but, no. but I, it, I quite like that? the gooeyness, just because yeah. it is, makes it quite a contrast from the, mm. the crust. OK, Danny, this is, this is number two. OK, thank you. Wow. <laughs> Rub. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure about this I'm one. I'm not no. sure it's about quite the cream. Bitter. Mm. Yeah, it's the cream. It's quite dry, actually, isn't it? It's quite mm. flaky on the top. I shouldn't be overconfident about, you know, the brownies at this stage, but I have to say, I bloody am, you know that. Are you? Because if I lose this challenge this week, <laughs> honestly... I say... Uh, you... I will start liking anti Roll Thompson. That's how confident <laughs> I am I'm going to win. Yeah, I think I've had enough of that one. Yeah. Ali yeah. <laughs> JB. Oh, so this week the winner is? Yes. Well done, Sarah. Oh, get oh, out, no. Williams. <laughs> Pissing <laughs> around. Oh, no! Sarah won. Oh, yes. No. Oh, get Again. out. I'm really sorry. <laughs> The result, you know that. I'm gonna go upstairs and see the judges. Where are they? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you find it funny. Um, just out of interest, I mean, taste that again for me. Okay. Yeah, all of you, and then I can start with the lady at the end. Now, tell me what you're tasting. It tastes bitter. Bitter. Yeah, it's got kind of like almost burnt taste to it. Burnt? Yeah, yeah slightly, yes, slightly so. burnt. Look how, look, look, just look how wet that is in the centre. In the middle, but you've got to get through the dry outside to get to the middle. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I don't understand it. Just slightly too dry. Yeah. It's my life, I'm sorry. All three of you can <laughs> off out of here now as well, yes? <laughs> dear, oh dear. <laughs> Useless. I'm not going to serve it. I'm going to serve my chocolate brownie, my restaurant, <laughs> my customers, and, and, and my reputation on the line. And that's that. And that's it. Do that you mind? is fair enough. I'm really sorry, but no, it is okay because you do think this is poo, don't you? Uh, no, it's just it, it, you know it's not it's nice. not bad, but it's not good. Come here. That's Let me it. get round that bump. <laughs> oh, send it out here like this. Well done. Well done. <laughs>
Next on the menu, I rediscovered Britain's most underrated but delicious meat. Mm. If it's by you, I'd have it any day. And Phil and Russell find out which one of them is staying and who's going home. One of you is a follower and one of you is a creator. Right, Sarah. Yes, I know it's not your dessert, but you can still no. get the pan. Do you want me to pick the nuts out and make no. it better? I don't mind you picking my nuts <laughs> at all, for God's sake. Would you like a knife? It's so rude. Huh? I do. Yeah, it's stuck, you see. Mine didn't stick. So, oh! <laughs> Send that to that Joel, one, please. Now, oh, my Perfect. God. Oh, gosh, it's quite nice, this. You've got to wash your hands now, you know that. We're going to get so many plates, yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> Look That's... at the buttons in mine. See, disappointing, really, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad you think so. Thanks so much. Et voilà. Chocolate bruni with creme fraiche. Can you just say that for me one more time? <laughs> Chocolate... <laughs> Chocolate bruni with creme fraiche. Bon appétit. Oh, my God, that was so cute. A chocolate bruni. Ladies, enjoy your chocolate brownie. Very succulent and lovely. <laughs> kind of dessert you want to take to bed, right? Perfect. Perfect. I can tell you, like. Soft on the outside and soft on the inside. Yes. And you've got a little bit of chocolate dripping down yeah, here. And it's perfect. <laughs> this week, I've been looking at one of Britain's tastiest, but sadly, most unfashionable meats. Once upon a time, mutton was a very reasonably priced meat that everyone ate before it fell off the kitchen radar. And not only do I want to see it back in restaurants, back on their menus, but at home as well, because this is part of our culinary heritage. Mutton is a meat from a sheep that's at least two years old. It's rarely sold in supermarkets and can be hard to get your hands on. These days, most of our mutton gets eaten in Europe. When was the last time you ate mutton? Years ago. Years ago. And who cooked it? My grandmother. It's a bit sort of old-fashioned and a bit... It's not very sort of sexy, is it, mutton? I've never eaten mutton at all, ever. It is a cheap cut of meat. Most people now earn more money, they buy better cuts of meat. It looks like mutton's been completely forgotten. So why did mutton disappear? Totally financial. In the 1940s, the imports from um, Australia and New Zealand came. Um, the price of lamb and wool went down. And it wasn't worth farmers keeping ewes for more than a single season. So Everything it wasn't was... about the flavour, it was no. just about the price of wool, Absolutely. sadly. Absolutely. Mm. Why should the British public out there be eating more mutton? because it's being extensively grazed. It cannot be factory farmed. It's the wildest and most natural meat that we can possibly eat, mm -hmm. and one of the most delicious. To produce the best mutton, sheep need a diet of good green grass and correct treatment once they've been slaughtered. A mutton carcass should be hung whole for around about two weeks. The meat is extraordinary. It's amazing the difference uh, in mutton and lamb, how dark it is. And it's surrounded by a lot more fat. You can deal with that, you know, in, in the cooking process. You can use the same cuts as you do in lamb from mutton. And what's the price of mutton now? It's about half the price of lamb. And twice as much flavour. For someone at home cooking for the first time, what would you recommend? Oh, I'd say, I'd say the diced. The diced. That would be the one. I mean, that's diced up ready now for a stew. Ready to go. Mutton has a reputation for being slightly tough. And the secret behind this particular dish is the length of the cooking time. So what I'm cooking here is the simplest of mutton stews. Generous with the seasoning, run it through some flour, shake it, and into the pan. So what we're doing now is putting flavour on it. Woo! Once it's browned, into the colander and just leave it to drain. Vegetables. Now, this is a stew, so we don't have any little sort of fine dices. Garlic, just in there in half. Celery, the leeks. A sprig of rosemary, and a nice sprig of thyme. Peppercorns. Lightly crush them. Some alpha puree. Roast it off. Half bottle of house red wine. Take your mutton, mix that in, pour boiling hot water on top. So that's it. Two and a half hours on a low gas. Perfect. It's ready. Now, let's see if we can convert South London to mutton. You want me to have some of that? Tell you what, it's well cooked, the mutton. That is delicious. Oh, it's lovely. You enjoy that? Mm. If it's by you, I'd have it any day. Mm. Am I allowed some more? Promise me you'll try a mutton stew this weekend. Deal? Deal. So come on, you lot, give mutton a go. It is a tasty meat, and let's be honest, it does deserve a second chance. How's your brownie? Can I just tell you what I love? Go on. 
See that? That's really runny. Oh, yeah, there's a little chocolate butter inside. I love the runny. But get off, that's that, mine. No. Mm. Fucking share. No. It's romantic to no. share. There's only one thing that I don't do, and that's share my puddings. Your background in food, you lived in Paris. I lived in Paris. Yeah. And you worked part time there? As I a... did, I did. I was, oh God, I was a singing waitress. But can I just say, a I was a very waitress. good waitress. So karaoke was in that long ago. Serious. That, that was good. That's very Do you good. ever need. Uh, I can't believe you're doing that. You're balancing with a finger underneath there. And you know, spoon onto there. I can help. Jimmy Carr's in tonight, yes? Where is he? Where? Uh, oh, there he is. There he is there. Sat upright, Jimmy, looking Jimmy nice and perfect. Carr. Yes. Jimmy Carr. That's now, he presented last year the 100 Worst Britons. You know, yeah. I came 82nd and you came 95th, which is a bit out Did of order. Did I? Yes. Now so that you've through. told me that. Yes. I'll name him yeah. as well later as well. Yeah, I'm going to get yeah. him to Catapult. taste. Catapult. Yeah, big time. He actually sits like a little public schoolboy over there, doesn't he? <laughs> He's like the sort of... We're the lost talking brother. about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, first of all, to... Both of you, well done. One step away from working with me personally. Phil, how bad do you want it? Um, the knowledge I'd learn off you, Gordon, would just be unreal. And it's a case of I want to soak up all the knowledge that you can teach me so I can take it away and then open my own restaurant. Um, Russell, how bad do you want it? I want it really bad. This is what I'm trying to train for, and just to have that chance. And like nothing like this ever happens to me. Um, literally being a whole small town Chinese lad in the takeaway to this. What more can I say? It's a tough decision for me. However, there was one big difference between you both this evening, because one of you is a follower and one of you is a creator. And Phil, you followed Russell. And that's the reason why you're going home tonight. I'm really sorry. Thank you. Keep going. I will do. Yes? Yes, yeah, sure. chef. You? Cheers, thank you very get much. Get some sleep. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Get your shit together. Yeah. Thank you, chef. You don't want. Thank you. Welcome to the F Word on the menu tonight for our main course. A delicious pan-roasted sea bass with a sweet and sour pepper sauce. It's gobble gobble, croak as the turkeys breathe their last. Do I feel any remorse? Do I? <laughs> Janet Street Porter sets me straight on my fig tart. I can give you my word that any women in the audience will not eat pastry. Oh. So you're wasting your time. Oh. And my trainees learn that I won't accept second best. It's only going in one place, darling. That's going in the bin. OK, on order, six covers, table two. Six ravioli, main course, six sea bass. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Colin Jackson, watch that table, please. Wait. Yep. Tonight's starter is a duck and chestnut ravioli with a sauce of Jerusalem artichoke. How long, Miller? One minute, less yeah. than a minute. Spinach, then. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to throw the raviolis there. back. Let's go, yes? I've got the spinach. I've got three commies in the kitchen this week. Tama, Miller and Danny. Only one of them can come back next week. Right, now, first table, Tanner. Ravelis are overcooked. Spinach is not ready, yes? We chef. How long for yours? 30 seconds. Let's serve yours first. But can I have the spinach first? Chef, it's ready. Too late. Sorry, big boy. Missed your chance. That's cowboy cooking. Yes. Not in here. Wakey, wakey, yes? Yes, chef. Now, we're serving a Jerusalem artichoke sauce with the ravioli. Don't peel them. The flavour's in that skin. Slice it in half and just slice it down, almost like you're slicing shallots. It's important to start soaking them straight away, otherwise they'll go black. Now we've sweated them down, we're going to add some chicken stock. But you can add a vegetable stock and keep it as a vegetarian sauce. Bring it up to the boil, turn down the heat, eight to ten minutes, and then they're going to be ready for pureeing. Look. And there we have the most amazing Jerusalem artichoke sauce ready for the ravioli. Miller, yes, far too thick and it's like starch. 
Yes. Yes. Hello, Miller. Yes, you can do something with these as well now, yeah? Start oh, again. Yeah. Sorry. Next, the filling for the ravioli. Duck confit. Basically, it's going to be cooked in its own fat. Get your duck fat and just pour the duck fat over the legs. 180 degrees in the oven for about one hour, 45 minutes. Nice and slow. Next, shred the duck off the bone and add a tablespoon each of chestnut puree, sherry vinegar and double cream. Season with chives and bind it all together. Get your mix and put it into a nice ball because that's the shape of the ravioli. But look, you can still see the duck, the chives, the cream. And that's ready to go in between the pasta. Two discs per portion. Duck into the center of the pasta. And then we use an egg wash around the outside that binds the pasta together. One disc on top of the other, place over the ravioli, push down, lift up into your hands, and just squeeze all the air out and go around. And just remember the sort of days when you used to grow up with those flying saucer spaceships with a sherbet in the center. That's all we're trying to create. Nice round top and a nice round bottom. Most important thing about cooking raviolis is always add a touch of oil to the water. That strengthens the pasta when we put the raviolis in the water and also protects it. And then just get the pan and twist the pan from left to right. And what that does, it prevents any ravioli from sticking on the bottom. Turn that gas back up now. Yeah? If you put the six in there, the temperature's gone down. So you have to be intelligent now, turn the heat Sorry, back I'll up a little bit. If it's not boiling, what happens to the ravioli? It will just break apart. It will burst. Yes. And it will sink to the bottom and it will stick to the pan. And then should. we'll throw more away. Wait. And with that, you can f off home. Yeah? Okay. Salt, tamar, let's go. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, you just put a big clump in there, Miller. I'll put it around here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or take it out. You don't just put a clump in there, otherwise someone's going to have a very salty ravioli, yeah? Get it in the bin and start again. Chef, I've got 10 seconds start. Yeah, that's right. Six. I don't want all that bullshit, 10, 5. I just give you one minute. Yes, Chef. Six ravioli's in. Wait. When they're in the water, then you connect with me. Yes, Chef. Until then, shut the up, OK? They're going in now, Chef. Let's go. Turn the oh, gas down, please. Yes. OK. Spinach. In the centre of the bowl. And the spinach helps the ravioli stay in place. Now, the juice of artichoke sauce. That is winter at its best. Come on, Tamar, come on, you'll fast asleep again. Honestly, you're like a big telegraph pole. Come on, big boy, you have got to bend those bones. Yes, Chef. You know that, yeah? You're about as flexible as a <laughs> post box. Move, go, table six. Go. How was your duck ravioli? It was Beautiful. absolutely delicious. Yes. Yes. This time of year, really wintry. Some shows rich, chestnuts are beautiful. It is so well balanced, the flavours. Uh, very creamy, it's meaty, perfect. It's judgment day for the turkeys and it's the first time I've ever slaughtered an animal. The turkey's time is up. Furley Whittingstall has popped round to give me some advice on slaughtering the turkeys. What are your plans for how they're going to be slaughtered? Chris, the farmer's going to come down and, and bring we'll a mobile you know, slaughterhouse, a, a trailer, and, and do it properly, like, here. yeah, here. That's brilliant. Has he explained exactly how that's going to be done? Yeah, it's a very you know, straightforward procedure. They're going to be stun gun. They'll die instantly, you know, three to four seconds. That's definitely the right thing. Get him here, get it done here. Mm -hmm. and no long journeys, no, no. extra stress. I and any that's... preparation for that? I mean... Yeah, absolutely. You shouldn't feed them for 24 hours before slaughter. Really? Well, because you're going to hang them with the guts in, which is yeah. right for developing the flavour, uh -huh. but you, you, you want the guts in, but you don't want any shit in there. It can just maybe turn the flavour uh, a little bit on a long hanging. So now I'm going to starve them for 24 hours before we kill them? That's just the way it goes. That's uh, Almost all animals go, yeah. go to slaughter on an empty stomach, uh -huh. and it's definitely the right thing for the meat. I also asked Hugh what's the right way to prepare the kids. If, as I'm guessing might be likely, most yep. of the kids don't want to see them go to slaughter... No. What you should still do, I think, is bring them to say goodbye. Right. So that they understand there's a finality. OK. That, that's it. Bye-bye yep. to the... We're gonna, today we're going to say goodbye to the turkeys. Yep. Now the morning's arrived for that goodbye. Bit of a milestone today for the kids. I was dying to get to this particular day because I wanted them to understand exactly the whole objective 
to why we're doing this. There we go. No, I'll let them out. Let me say goodbye probably. Come on, grumpy bag. Which one are we going to eat first? Nigella. Gary. Why Nigella? Because she's the biggest. She's the biggest. Doesn't mean to say she's going to be the tastiest. You know that. Um, but could we keep their feet? No, we're not keeping their feet. Right, listen. Listen, I want you to say, yes, goodbye to them. We've succeeded in what we set out to do, Meg. Growing our own Christmas lunch. Well done for looking after them. For me, being a chef, of course, it's been a, you know, an amazing journey for them to understand what it's like to go to the farm, to pick them up, to look after them, to feed them, to clean them, and then to eat them. It's crucial for any child. See Bye, you turkeys. In the oven. I'll see you in the oven. Can I see them be killed? No, you can't see them being killed, no. Next on the menu, along with our main course of sea bass with a sweet and sour pepper sauce, I get Marty McCutcheon back in the kitchen for the perfect roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. I thought you'd make me cry, but because you'd be shouting all about something. And I get my commies to run the kitchen on their own. The last person on the hot plate is going home. Great chef. One minute from now, yes? Four sea bass in. Green chef. Let's go. Miller. Yes, one. Yeah. Danny. Yes, yeah, get on the stove yes, and stop chef. hiding. Yes? Welcome back to the F Word. Time now for the main course. Pan roasted sea bass with a sweet and sour pepper sauce. Sea bass. In French, Lou de mer. That means wolf of the sea. Fill it. Just run the knife all the way down. One nice long swipe. And there you go. One fill it off. Easy. Pepper sauce. Rather than cut the peppers in half and take out the seeds, just cut around it, leave the seeds in there, and do the job once. It's almost like as if you're peeling an orange. Shallots. Nice hot pan. Olive oil. Star anise. The anise flavour goes absolutely beautifully with the sweetness of the peppers. Salt. Basil, white wine vinegar, Burma, reduce. It gives body to the sauce. Nice, glossy, syrupy. 200 mils of water. Simmer. It's fresh, it's vibrant, and it goes brilliantly with a sea bass. Blitz. Absolutely beautiful bass. Score. Salt. Thyme. It's just so perfumed as a sea bass. Olive oil. Skin side down. In it goes. Fingers on top for 30 seconds. 90% of the cooking time will take place in that skin. But you'll know when it's cooked, when it starts turning bright white. Now it's time to turn it over. Just finish it with olive oil. Sea bass with pepper sauce. Done. With the sea bass, we're serving braised endive and rice pilaf. Now, endive is something you eat a lot of raw in salads. I quite like it this way because it's sort of roasted, braised, cooked in orange juice, and it's the perfect way of cooking on the, especially in winter. Now that we've got the colour on there, the caramelisation is taking place on the outside. It's time to add a touch of Grand Marnier. Grand Marnier in. Whew. Merry Christmas. Once we've burnt off the alcohol, get your orange juice, give it a good shake. And now, look, orange juice into the pan. Into the oven, 10 to 12 minutes, and by the time the orange juice has evaporated, the endive is cooked. Miller? Yes, go on. Look at the bass. Miller, it's only going in one place, darling. That's going in the bin. 
It's burnt. Sorry. Start again. Yes. No. And Danny, what the f are you doing? What are you doing? I was just making sure this no. didn't burn, Chef. And... You're making sure the sea bass is burnt? Are no, you done no, that already? No, no, no. The this, this sauce, Chef. I just took the it sauce. off the heat. Right. OK. And, and Basically, can you get a grip? Yes, Chef. Ten portions of sea bass in the bin. Nothing happening. Yes, Chef. You're looking busy. We're actually doing nothing. And all you're doing is just spinning around. You know, like this. Bobbing around. Nothing's actually been done. Now, there's the top of the endive. Oui. Yeah? Get the endive coming back down like this. See that nice little point it had? Oui. And place the base of the endive, yeah? At the base of the plate. Look. Oui. Yeah? And follow it up. Now watch. Oui. There's the sea bass. There's the top. There's the bottom. Oui. White the sea bass on there. Now look. I'm going to show you this one. Watch. Sauce. One spoon. Round. And look at the colours. Oui. Look. There you go. Well done. Finish it off. Hello, Miller, please. Now, look at that there. Look. Yeah? Beautiful. The colours are there. Yes? Yeah. Do that plate. I'll do this one. Yes? Happy with that? We oui, chef. Are you happy with that? We. Oui. So you should be. Go, please. I've been in another woman's kitchen this week helping her to make the perfect roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. Change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hold on a minute. <laughs> We're gonna go perfect Sunday dinner. Roast beef, roast potatoes, Yorkshire puddings, some carrots and cabbage, and then maybe a really nice sort of um, sexy gravy. Can I just say in advance yes. that I'm quite an intelligent woman, but when I... it comes to the kitchen, I don't mind admitting I am a complete bimbo. What's that? Um, uh, some hollandaise sort of sauce. Hollandaise sort of sauce. No, that's dripping. That's yeah. going to make the perfect, perfect Yorkshire pudding. So the key to this is to have a time plan. Right. Yes. Yeah. Everything else after that falls into sink. There's a cloth for you. So always keep your cloth there like that. So you've always got it to hand up and down, not over the shoulder, not left lying around. Okay. And then when you want to touch something in the oven, you can always just hold it there and nip it out. First thing, most important thing, we'll get the beef in. Now season the fat. Season the fat? Yeah. Because what that does is it gets rid of the water in the fat and makes it a lot more tasty. Start it off on 250 degrees. 250. There we go. There's the first look. Put there something in the oven. So the first time we stuck one in the oven? Yeah. Um, Yorkshire pudding mix. One, two, and then finger and thumb in and just lift open. One egg. OK? You've got yeah? a bit of shell in there. Where? There. You saw it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 and the nerves are gone. <laughs> OK, well spotted. He is human! I'm going to get some milk, a bit of pepper. Oh, my. So it's fat, so that's going to help them rise and stop them from sticking. Do we have to have that much in there? You've put more milk in there. Yeah, just a tablespoon. Oh, just do I have a heart down. attack? Put that in there. Over you go to the tray. In one. That's it. Good. A little bit more. Good. Whilst the beef is roasting away, they should go zoom. And now we just do the easy stuff, roast potatoes. I have had nights where I'm thinking, God, it would be so great if I could cook right now. Christmas dinner, sometimes I'd like Christmas at mine, and then my mum's like, no, why do we have it at yours? Because then we've got to cook, and mm -hmm. we haven't got everything we need there, and no. we have to bring everything with us. I like to get the tray on top of the gas ring before it goes in the oven. It just stops it from sticking. Watch your fingers. Rosemary. Ow, he's bloody spitting. Yeah, it does, but that's the water from the potatoes. Now you can start to see the potatoes colouring a little bit. Let's take the beef. Take your fingers like this and just touch your jaw like that inside your cheek. Yeah? Mine's very yeah. squidgy. <laughs> yeah. That means it's rare when you hit on the beef like that. So that's still quite rare. If it's medium, it's firm. It's like your chin. Medium, well done. Medium, well so, done, Chris. They are absolutely amazing. Just to finish them off properly, the secret is to turn them around, turn them upside down, so they cook underneath. Oh, look at that. I'm going to throw in a little bit of onion. Do you know what? They're doing my eyes in. Ugh. Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> Dear, dear. Cool. Oh, oh. Shit, they're strong. I thought you'd make me cry, but so... because you'd be shouting all about or something, not because of the onions. What are we doing now? Gravy? Gravy. What I'm going to do is just put some of these tomatoes in the bottom. All they're going to do is actually make the gravy a little bit sweet. You know, I grew up in a three-bedroom council estate, shared a bedroom with my brother. This kind of food, we didn't eat. No, I didn't either. There was quite a few foods that I was kind of quite frightened of, I must admit. Like what? 
Well, I mean, the word organic, I immediately thought that that was something disgusting yep. for a long time when I was, yep. when I was younger. Uh -huh. And when people used to say that they were kind of vegetarian, I used yeah. to think, Ooh, What's that? What on earth would you eat then? Because everything, like I say, was chicken, chips and beans, fish, chips and beans. Yeah. You know. And that was it. And that was it. A nice knob of butter in there. Where's the butter? Butter. It should be in the fridge. OK, how big do you want the knob to be? Pass that through a sieve. Right, so have I got time to quickly just put a bit of makeup on and brush my hair and make it look like this was completely effortless? Yep. Great. Um, how long? Five minutes? Uh, of course, it's natural. Yeah. <laughs> now, women back in the kitchen. Right, they're here, right, they're here, you. and I've set them down. I love my friends, uh -huh. but they are quite judgmental. Are they? When it comes to my cooking. I've never seen her in the kitchen, actually. Fussy. Um, they're just, they're just dreading it, I think. Martin cooking, are we a bit worried? Don't worry about getting everything sort of piping hot. The beef's rested. Yes. Yorkshire puddings are served at room temperature. Yeah. And are you I'll... sure they're meant to be served at room yeah. temperature? Yeah, no, what we'll do, just before we take the potatoes out, we'll stick them in the oven. Just a just, bit yeah, here. absolute definite. Try and keep the plates nice and clean. So it looks like I really do know what I'm doing. Yeah, and you're in control. That beef looks delicious. Yeah, see how it's coming together? Colour. Mm -hmm. so it's just all almost coming out like a sort of a chain reaction. This has to be your pièce de résistance. Yeah. Crispy. A nice and light. Look at that. Yeah, that's it. Good. Ready? Well, that's it. Well done, babe. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, here we go. OK. That is probably one of the best Yorkshire puddings I've ever tasted mm. in my life. Mm. I can't stop thinking about that. You've done it. That's what's going through every mouthful. I'm just thinking. Oh, God. <laughs> it's Martine. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Cheers. Well, cheers. Well, cheers. Well, cheers. Well, cheers. Well, cheers. Well, cheers. My request that you don't let off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh, thank, thank you. Wow. Thank you. Right, Danny, Miller, Tamar, come here. Yes. yes. Now, the brigade are going out. And you're going to cook a table on your own. Wait. Yes? Yes, chef. OK. Yes. The last person on the hot plate is going home. Wait, chef. Miller, you got four sea bass, table 12. Wait. Yes. Danny, you got six sea bass, table eight. And you, Tamar, have got five sea bass, table five. Yes? Wait. Whoever doesn't do it up to scratch, OK, is going home. Four minutes on the hot plate. Move your ass, yes? Pilaf piping hot. Sauce beautifully seasoned. Sea bass nice and crispy. Seasoned with thyme flowers. Rock salt in there, yes? Let's go. Come on, Tama. Watch your bass. Don't blow it now, big boy, yeah? Let's go, yes? Good. Cool the pan down. Not enough colour on there, Danny. So I don't know why you're telling them. Look, that looks boiled. We might as well steam the sea bass. Chef, I'm ready in one minute. One minute? I'll be very surprised if those sea bass are ready in one minute. How long, Danny? Make it count, yes? Three, three minutes, Chef. Service, please. Table five here. Don't sod the plates up now. Take your time, yes? Come on. We all started off at the same time. However, it's all coming out in different times. Quite interesting. Let's go. Don't you dare send that. Come on, hurry up. Work and talk at the same time. Stop gawping. Oh, all that lovely, delicious food. Now you're going to send it on dirty plates. You ready? Yes, yeah, sure. Send it then. Okay, can you go, please? Table five. Table five, sure. We're listening. Interesting. Five. Right down the hot plate. How long, Miller, please? I'm coming up now. You're coming up now, yes? Table 12, Miller, please. Table 12. How long, Danny? One minute, chef. Yeah, nicely sourced. Very nicely sourced. Bass? Chef. Now, that's one piece of bass. Yes. Yeah. And the person sat opposite, we sat with that piece of bass. Different size. And they went in the pan at the same time? So they won't be cooked the same. Are you happy with that? That's the question I've got to ask you. No, Chef. Not now, no. I respect you honestly. Thank you. Because I'm not happy with that. Okay. Four more bass. Start again. 
Service. No, I'm going home. That's the top of the bass, that's the belly. Turn oh, around. That's okay. at six o'clock, yeah. I mean, I've been meaning it for the last four hours. That's better. Thank you. Okay. Table. 16. Go. Thank you. Come on, Danny, please. Not, How long? It's not quite there, Chef. W yeah. One fish, not quite there. You okay? Not quite long. I've got to have a. One minute. Chef. One minute. There you go. Thank you. Yes. Table 10, please. Mm hmm. Ladies. Gordon. Uh, how was the bass? It's gorgeous. Yes. I like her. Yes. Was that wild or farm? Uh, that we don't use farm bass. Oh. Line caught. Right. And uh, cooked in the skin, so yeah. nice and crispy. I like the, the skin. Bass. I think the skin. People. Are, I, yeah. It really annoys me when I yeah. see people leave the skin because yeah. the skin's where all the nutrition is. I know, but and I mean, it's where all the oil is. That's why we, we cook it on that, and of course we season it with thyme flowers, and it's really nice and crispy. It was really really good. I'm not a massive fish fan, but I think this has converted me. There was a lot of depth to the flavours. I think. Um, Terrifically tangy um, red pepper sauce. Fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. Love it. OK, uh, Tama. Yeah, Danny. I'm Miller. Quick. Yes, I'm sorry. Well done. Yeah. That was a test to push you to the extreme there. You know that. Yeah. yeah. And boy, did it feel like you're really on your own there, cooking everything from the endive, mm. pilaf, the bass. That was a race to see who had it together. Do you understand? Quick. Yes. And Danny, I so respect what you said there because you yeah. knew yeah. one bass was overcooked. Yes. And one bass was cooked perfectly. Yes. Unfortunately, not good enough. No. But you've got to be happy with yourself tomorrow morning. Yeah, cool. Because the effort, big boy, was 110%. Thank you. And something to be really proud of. Good night. Good night. Ah, and remember what you did, good night, big boy. guys. Yes. Thank Say good night to him. Good night. Good night. Next on the menu, it's pudding time. Janet Street Porter thinks her baked fig recipe is better than mine. I'd like to wish you good luck. Yes? You're wishing me luck. Yeah, I, I could... think with your track record, I should be wishing you luck. And Giles Corrin finds out what are your pet restaurant hates. So, if our maitre d' Jean Baptiste came over to you in the restaurant, in the F word restaurant, and said, Excuse me, madame, we'll have no tit in here, uh, what would you do? I think I'd probably complain, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the final countdown for the turkeys. I'm going to put yeah. that in its mouth and then. Uh... Now it's time for pudding, and Janet Street Porter is going to attempt to beat me with her favourite fig pudding. I always say that to my con sort of fellow contestants, good luck. You're wishing me luck. Yeah, I, I can... think with your track record, I should be wishing you luck. I can tell you what <laughs> attitude already, your hands are folded. Are you in a yeah, mood? Yeah, my body language is like... Body language. I know this kind of dessert's a bit beneath you. It's not complicated enough for you, is it? Yeah, not unless you're going to make some chocolate doodly dar thing on the top. It's just going to be a nice, simple fig tart. Nothing tart? More than... You're making a tart? A ta you're in the kitchen, so I thought nothing better to do than a nice you're tart. You're making a fig tart? Yes! You absolute slimy f***. I'm That's just going to bake figs. No. What do you mean? Since when did you add the pastry bit? I thought we were cooking the same thing. It's a fig recipe. You had your bake... Well, I can give you my word that any women in the audience will not eat pastry. So oh. you're wasting your f time. Oh. I'm making the kind of dessert women like. Every Fruit. We'll not find pastry. Out. Fruit. Right, OK. Uh, I'm not going to argue. Not now. We've only been in the kitchen <laughs> three minutes. Cool. Dear, dear. This is a bit of a very easy dessert, which is baked figs, which you just cut up and then you squeeze so they open up a bit. And also, when you buy the figs, you don't want to be buying figs that are too ripe because they'll disintegrate before you even start. Fuck her off. Do, 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 don't, do, don't put me off. Do, Shut up. Do, just do, move do. away. <laughs> I'm just sprinkling over some brown sugar. Janet's doing a baked fig um, dessert. I'm doing a very, very simple, straightforward fig tart, which Janet thinks is slightly ponty, but it's not. It's just puff pastry, frangipan, which is made out of almonds, eggs, sugar, and icing sugar. We're going to spread the frangipan on the puff pastry and just bake it in the oven for two to three minutes. And then once the frangipan starts to cook, I'm going to take out the tart and lay the figs on there. In the oven, two and a half, three minutes, Done. In we go. I'm just adding some marsala, which is a sweet Italian uh, dessert wine. You can use it. It's worth having a bottle of this at home, actually, because you can use it in uh, quite a lot of desserts. Good for trifle. Now, I know you're trying to put me off, but look what's happening now to my fig tart. Pastry's yeah. half cooked. Mm -hmm. Frangipan started to rise. All I'm going to do now is just put the figs yeah, but... on top. That doesn't look poncy to you, does it? And look what I'm doing. Ice and sugar yeah. and five spice 
OK, oh, yeah. glaze over the tart. Oh, I'm so determined I'm going to win this one, you know that. Huh? Just have a little smell of that. It smells fantastic. Huh? It's great. Now we're going to glaze them in the oven. How are yours doing? They're fine, they need a bit longer. Now, it's quite fascinating, you are a classified foodie, but was it your mum who taught you, or...? Oh, no, my mother couldn't cook. My oh, mother really? was a ghastly cook. Really? She could only cook... I wish she belonged to that generation where they cooked everything for far, far too long. Stews. Oh, Sunday lunch. I mean, they Grey literally beef. put the meat on the minute you finish, finish breakfast. And then there's that strange working-class meal called tea, which yep. you have on a Sunday, where you open a tin of ham, and you have the salad, which is a lettuce with two tomatoes. <laughs> can I look at and my figs? Yes, of course you can. Yeah, they're done. They're done. How do you know they're done? Because they're soft to the touch. Yes. Um, are you cooking this for your birthday? Uh, we're not allowed to say it's your 59th birthday, are we? Say I'm 59, and you can say I'm nearly as old as your mother, you're rude. You are the same age as my mum. I look great. So, I know you do. Now, do you know what I'm going to do now? Just while they're coming out of the oven, still nice and warm, I'm just going to glaze it with a little bit of honey. Heat it up, and then back in the oven for 30 seconds. Now, do you cook at home with your partner? We don't cook at the same time. Why? So I've been married good. four times, Gordon. I know where it all goes wrong, so, so I don't want it to go wrong, so we never cook the same meal at the same time. So that's where it goes special. And also, he, he wants to eat things like mashed potato. I can't eat mashed potato. I'll have an arse the size of a house. Honey, figs, spice. Have you any idea how much I've got to win this, eh? you got no idea? You have to do an entirely different dish to me so in order to win. Hey, hey. No, that's, that's, that's hard in there. A little bit of a rest time. Yeah, slightly sort of come down time, yes. <laughs> and how was your sea bass? It was lovely. Flavours are just not, not too overpowering. No. 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 Just, no. Yeah, yeah, just nice. You do quite a lot of cooking. I right? do, I do. I enjoy cooking. It's one of the, the only few creative things I say I can do. And how did you learn to get me? How did you first get involved with sort of cooking? Do you Mom know, or? No, I used to watch, just sit and watch. Didn't do anything take any lessons, do any recipe books, just watch how my parents used to cook. And my father used to do most of the cooking. Oh, okay. My very first meal I ever cooked wasn't a Jamaican meal, funny enough. No. It was sweet and sour pork. Sweet and sour pork. And I was nine now, when I did that with. You guys have been spending a lot of time together yes. over the last yes. couple of months. Mm -hmm. Yes. Was there any good teacher? Was she? Excellent. Yes. Patience of a saint. Show me position one. <laughs> There's no That's position one. We don't one. have that. Isn't there? No. Ask him to show you a, um, um, a cha-cha-cha or a... a cha just show me any position. Pit. It's oh. quite difficult. I mean... <laughs> Um, the first thing, if you, you, you try to learn to, if, certainly when we're doing some of the sample, is to try to learn to roll your hips. <laughs> yeah? So, quick. so from Ready? here over, roll and back. So, uh, slowly, do slowly. <laughs> Schmuck, you've been doing this for two months now. <laughs> to do slowly and uh, make okay. sure no one's watching okay. you. But, okay. You take your foot to the side, yeah. you roll in, through. Roll your hip and, and go back. back. Hey, oh! oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That looks the faces of a good Cheers. Latin dancer. He's looking good. Um, hold on, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Hello, Giles. Hello, Gordon. What have you been doing this week? I've been, I've been looking at things that ought to be banned from restaurants. You mm -hmm. know, basically, the government are banning smoking yes. from everywhere. Yes. And I thought smoking's... I mean, I know they're banned, it's banned in your restaurants. Mm -hmm. Have been for a long time. But it's, it's not the end of the world, no, smoking. No. And there are things which are far more irritating in, in, in restaurants. So we did, a, we did a survey to find out what, what other things people would like to see banned. Welcome to Shea Jiley. For one day only, the owners of this restaurant have kindly lent it to me. And now that I'm a restaurateur, I'm going to start banning things, almost everything, the things that annoy me. I don't know what annoys you. For example, people who drink cappuccinos after dinner. It's a breakfast drink. Or ugly people, they just put me off my food. Supposing it was your restaurant, though, what would you ban? The Harden's Restaurant Guide has concluded that people who eat out regularly find one in four meals unsatisfactory. In a bid to try and improve things, we commissioned a survey of 2,000 people to find out what the public would like to see banned from restaurants forever. I hate that having to buy a bottle of water when a glass of tap water would do. The tenth most popular answer was paying for bottled still water. Nonetheless, this year restaurants have shifted 200 million bottles of it. Bad background music needs to be banned. Mmm, background music is there at number nine. Women wearing really chokingly overpowered in perfume. In our survey, that was the eighth most popular answer. Can you think of anything else that people might like to see banned from restaurants? I think probably children. 
Do you think we should ban children? Do you think we should just throw them out? Or do you think we should let them stay? Let them stay. Absolutely. Unfortunately, banning children came in at number seven. Breastfeeding? I think if women want to breastfeed, then they should be encouraged to do it in the window. <laughs> Sixth in our top ten of most popular answers was breastfeeding in restaurants. <laughs> But two-thirds of mothers attempt to breastfeed their babies, and the wind is definitely behind breastfeeders. In Scotland now, you're committing a crime if you try to stop it, and UNICEF wants the rest of the UK to go the same way. If, if people are that offended, it's up to them to, to leave. It's not, not up to me. If my child's hungry and wants to eat, then, you know, to me it's more embarrassing and it would disturb, ruin your evening more to have a baby that was screaming. So if our maitre d' Jean-Baptiste came over to you in the restaurant, in the F-word restaurant and said, excuse me, madame, we'll have no tit in here, uh, what would you do? Well, I, think, I think I'd probably complain, actually. <laughs> What do you think the most popular answer might have been? Maybe PDAs, kissing, making PDAs. public displays of affection. Fifth in the survey was snogging in restaurants, with more than a quarter of people voting for it to be banned. The toilets are not the sort of place you'd want to be parked close by, so bad placement of tables. Our survey says that tables too close to the loo are at number four. Mobile phones, people talking on their mobile phones. One, 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 minute, one minute, one minute. Uh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm doing, <laughs> doing a bit of telly. Sorry, what was that? You were saying there was something you wanted... Mobile phones? Oh. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, mobile phones come in nice and high at number three, but women are less interested in banning them than men. What do you think the top answer might have been? Say if you're going for a romantic meal and you get play, like oh. sat next to um, a whole group full of people maybe that haven't seen each other for ages. So what you're, we're basically talking about is badly planned tables, specifically yeah. thinking about romantic couples. Yeah, yeah. Tables too close together. It's our second most popular answer. One of the most irritating is when uh, you are charged service charge. Yeah. And then, of course, you get you know, the chip back after they've taken your card away. And on it will be gratuity as well. So that thing so, where they actually they add the 12 and a half percent yeah and then, and then they, they bring it back with then a there's blank a nice spare. little you know space gratuity and you think well you know i've paid that much so should i actually doubly pay it's our top answer the terrible practice of trying to make people tip twice is what most people want banned and you're not the only ones the trading standards people are unhappy about it too we looked at about 95 restaurants across london and found out that um, well over half of them were, were practising double tipping. So what couldn't be done about this? We forwarded our findings to the Department of Trade and Industry. Um, as far as I'm aware, they haven't done anything about it to date. Double tipping. You voted it the thing you most want to see banned from British restaurants. But this lot clearly are not going to do anything about it, so we're going to have to. And our campaign begins with you. What you have to do is log on to the F Word website and name and shame any restaurant that has ever tried it on with you. You've cooked the non-diet option and I've cooked the option for women who do not want to have big bums. The, oh, come on. Oh, I just... I want to so, taste my juice. I want to taste my juice. <laughs> that is fantastic. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, God, do you want to taste my juice? Tastes a little bit like Benelin. Right, John baptiste Benelin! Up, up you go. <laughs> yes? Cod mixture. Nice and soft with the pastry. Delicious. It's like delicious, that? but it's too rich for me. Oh, here we go. It smells lovely. It's Fee a bit hard. Is it phyllo pastry? Well, either, either that or puff pastry that shouldn't rise. Oh, blimey. It's a caramel. It looks, um, yeah, it's, it looks like it's been caramelised on the top. It's They're not too sweet, are they? OK, so now we're serving dessert number two. OK. Where's it? The figs are, the figs are kind of juicier and plumper, aren't they? I love the, um, the juice around right. it, the sauce around mm. it. Thank you. OK, uh, Jean-Baptiste, uh -huh. you well? The winner is... Jeanette. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! Again! Fantastic! Are you sure? Yes. Yes, no, what sure. What what did they say? You shouldn't take me off. You shouldn't have took my no, table the, 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 I told the, you the, I only the, played to win. The, uh, the, the puff pastry, a little bit too hard. The puff pastry, and a little the, bit and, too and they hard. they like the ice cream, you know, with the reason and the vanilla. Do you know my saving grace? I'm actually quite happy to lose to a talented cook. <laughs> Don't get out of my kitchen, <laughs> Janet Street Porter. Oh, confident. Next week on The F Word, we finally get to eat the turkeys. But first, I have to kill them. I don't want them to have to travel before slaughter, so I'm going to do it in my garden. 
Turkey farmer Chris Frederick has returned to my house with a mobile slaughter unit. I'm going to take them, put them in the shackle here, and then I am going to stun them. This is the probe. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put yeah. that in its mouth. Yeah. I just hit the button and the... For God's sake. Oh, mate, look at you sat on your perch. Relax, relax. Do I feel any remorse? Do I feel slightly guilty? Do I... I'm not going to have a go at slaughtering myself. Chris is a licensed slaughterman, so my turkeys are in expert hands. One, two, three. Eyelids are coming back. We're about there. That was so quick. That's it, done. Just cutting the arteries and veins in the back of the throat there, look. Right there. No obvious discomfort for no. the bird at all. Can I just say thank God the girls aren't here, you know that? The bag on this head is for... Just for our convenience, really, so we're not splashing blood around blood all over the place. Sure. Yeah. OK, so we're going to go with the clucking now. The turkeys are staying in their houses, so they can't see what's going on. Ainsley, ready, steady, pluck. Oh, dear. Ainsley. OK, here we go. Oh, Gaza. Let's go, big boy. OK. There you go. Right. Excellent. OK, that will do. Annie Parker works at Chrissy's farm and has been plucking since she was six. Um, I suppose the first time I plucked a turkey, it was quite scary. Really? Yeah. And how many birds can you pluck in one day? Probably about 30. 30? Your hands yeah. must... They, they must hurt, no? Towards the end of the day, yeah. Incredible. It does get a bit sore on your fingers. And it's a lot easier to do it when they're warm. Yeah, much easier. Yeah. It's starting off with cold hands can be a bit slow. Working on the farm, you don't get attached to them, do you? Oh, no, no, definitely not. No. no. What would you give me as a piece of advice? To, to, Always to... start from the wings. Always from the wings, because they're the thinnest part of the bird. That's right, yeah. Work your way down to the neck. Yep. Yeah. And then you just come back up to the breast and just work your way around till you get to the legs. And don't rip them. So when you first met your boyfriend, yeah, what do you do? Oh, I'm a mechanic. Oh, what do you do, love? Yeah, I'm a turkey plucker. <laughs> this one's picked up very, very well. Hasn't he? One pluck, Gary. Come on, Jamie. Be a good boy. Here we go. Straight into the shackle. Yeah. We go. I'm standing well back. There's 600 volts going through those birds. Let's go, Delia. Cool, dear. <coughs> Stunned. Come on, Nigella. No, 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 no. God, she's so big she can't even fit through the door. The last hey, one. Yeah. Why do we use electricity and not breaking the neck? Well, we find it a much more humane way of dealing with the job. Very quick and um, straightforward. That's the job done for the day. It's a sad ending, but it's the start of an exciting beginning. OK. Oh, dear. Finally. That's exactly what I wanted. Stun gunned, plucked, and ready for the butchers. Thank God the kids aren't here. Enjoying the taste of victory, madam? I am so madam Porter. <laughs> I bet you are. I bet they're sliding down the back of the throat with the greatest of ease. Yeah. Yes. It's good. It's, it's good. It is not so nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're happy. I do. I loved it. Good girl. You know, Janet Street Paul is happy, everybody. Won't last. Hi, Rach. Hello. How are you, darling? Very well. Did you enjoy your figs? I thought they were OK. OK, yeah, nothing more. Nothing special. Mm. And so what have you been up to this week? I've been looking at labels and what they do and don't tell you about products, mm -hmm. especially when they suggest something's good for you. Most of us would like to be healthy and eat foods that are good for us, so when we shop, we pick up things that fit in with that. But because of our current labelling laws, manufacturers can perfectly legally present foods in a way that suggests they might be better for us than they really are. Take this, for example. It's an officially low-fat biscuit. Personally, I'd imagine that if I bought this, I'd be eating less calories. But what the front of the packet doesn't tell you is that these biscuits are very high in sugar. So these officially low-fat biscuits contain more calories than these, and these, and these, none of which I'd dream of buying if I was watching my weight. Is it 
just me or are other people confused by the labels on the front of products? Why would you buy something that said low fat on it? Because it makes you feel better about what you're <laughs> eating, really. Do you think it might be low calorie? Well, if it's saying low fat, one would assume, I suppose, that the two are linked. You, you expect them to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. not just skip over the bad bit. They shouldn't be allowed to yeah. have that in big letters and what really yeah. is content in small letters. The labels on many products make claims about their fat content, but the front of the packet only tells half the story. When manufacturers reduce the fat, often you lose flavour, and they may add sugar in order to give you back that flavour. But the claim that they're making is only about that specific nutrient. If it's low in fat, that's all they're claiming. What's really important is that you look at the whole food, look at the back of the pack, and I think manufacturers could make that labelling much clearer. It's amazing what the labelling laws allow. Look at this. This is a plain yoghurt with 3.7 grams of fat per 100 grams. And this is a low-fat yoghurt with 1.2 grams of fat per 100 grams. I can add this whole bag of sugar and this still <laughs> counts as a low-fat yoghurt, which is a claim that the other one just can't make. Yep. Well, officially, that is still less than 3% fat, yeah. so that is a low-fat food. But if I were to have just three dessert spoons of that yoghurt, I'd be having the same number of calories as this chocolate bar. So we know what's in here, but if we tell the public it's low-fat, I wonder which one they'll choose. We go for the low fat one. The low fat yogurt. You put a whole bag yeah. of sugar in here. And, I, and, and the law allows me to say low fat yogurt, but I don't have to say plus a bag of sugar. That's wrong. Then. You look quite surprised. Yeah, I am quite surprised. Yeah, but I would say that was wrong. I'm hoping that Witch can explain the situation to me. The law on health and nutrition claims just isn't tough enough. While it is against the law for manufacturers to deliberately mislead in terms of the claims they make, there are a number of confusing and contradictory health and nutrition claims out there on the market. It's not just low fat. Guidelines on words like light or L-I-T-E are so vague, manufacturers can use them to imply a food is better for us than similar products, even if they still contain what's been defined as a lot of fat or sugar. So what's being done about all of this? Well, proposals are being discussed here from January next year in the European Parliament that will address all these issues, that will give clear definitions and make sure claims are checked. We're calling on UK MEPs and the British government to support these proposals to make sure that consumers can make a properly informed choice. So next time you go shopping, remember, check the back of the packet as well as the front. Look at all the nutritional information. And if you'd like to see the law changed and the regulations tightened, visit the F Word website and find out how you can make it happen. Tama, Miller, let's go. And first of all, to both of you, well done. Thank you. Tough day. If you were in my shoes, Tama, OK, and you had to send one of you guys home, who would it be and why? Um, so far from day one coming here, I've learned. And I, I know I've got so much more to go. You know, it's such a big journey ahead of me, but I'm hoping that, you know, you, you'll take me back next week so I can learn a little bit more of you. And, um, Miller? I hope you'd send Tama home. Um, I think you'll admit there's a difference from how I was in the beginning. Um, and I, th I think it can only get better. Um, I think I can bring commitment and maturity and just really hard work, frankly, to the kitchen. And I want to do that. You both did exceptionally well. The person who's going to be going home is Tama. Okay. Well, let me just say this. You're 18 years of age. Even in my kitchens, I don't have many 18-year-old cooks as strong as you. Thank you. You did very well. Cheers. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Yeah. I think he deserves a kiss. Well done, you. Welcome to the F Word. Tonight, I have to win the dessert challenge. I'm going head to head with him, Hugh Furley Whittingstall. Unfortunately, there's a new judge in the house. I'm going to be firm, but fair. It's Christmas in the F Word restaurant, and my menu wouldn't be complete without Delia, Ainsley, Jamie, Anthony, Nigella, and Gary. I get banged up for Christmas. Hello, yeah. God, fucking hell, guys, fucking hell, no? Yeah. And the pressure's on for Russell and Miller. By the end of tonight, one of these two will be coming to work for me. If I had to make the decision on those last two tables there, 
Russell, you'd be going home. On order four covers, table ten. Four oyster soup, main course four turkey, yes? One no breadcrumbs. Watch that table, yes? Russell and Miller are the two commies in the kitchen this evening. By the end of tonight, one is going to win a job in one of my restaurants, and the other one's going home. Yes, sorry, Gordon. Fuck, you're nearly going home. Watch the tickets, please, Russell. I'm trying to run a fucking hot plate here, and you're knocking them all over the place. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you're like a baby fucking rhinoceros. Come on. Russell, move your ass. Table six, yes? Four oyster soup, yeah? Yes, sir. Try and serve it before fucking midnight. Now, tonight's starter is oysters in champagne with a cucumber pappardelle. Don't turn your nose up at oysters. They are delicious and a real gourmet treat. If you don't like raw oysters, try cooking them because they taste amazing and can be enjoyed by the most squeamish guests. Now, first of all, got to open the oysters. Don't be scared of doing this because it's actually quite straightforward. All you have to do is get the knife and pierce inside the muscle. Not at the side, not at the end, because that's where the shell's really brittle. And just push down on top of the oyster until you get through and then just twist and the shell just pops off. Open up. Just cut through the muscle and out into the bowl. These are rock oysters and they're from Devon and they're one of the tastiest you can get this time of year. Right, cucumber, not too much cucumber, yes? All we do is get the peeler, place the cucumber down and peel. These really nice strips of cucumber. And they not only look fantastic, but it means they actually sort of look identical to Papadelli pasta, and they take seconds to cook. Bring to the boil a couple of ladles of vegetable stock. Add the cucumber, oyster juice, and the cream. Bring back to the boil and add your oysters. You've really got to move your ass because the oysters overcook within seconds, so you've really got to be quick and 30 seconds off the heat. Next, add a pinch of salt and a sprinkling of fresh chives. And then, we're going to finish the soup with champagne. The only thing that's missing now, the touch of lettuce. And that literally goes in seconds before you serve it. Take your cucumber. And that is a fantastically light, tasty, sumptuous, beautiful soup. That's been finished with champagne and lettuce. Service, please. please. Table seven, uh, Jean-Baptiste. Ali, yes. go. Use a ladle, please. We're going to be here all night, Sir Russell. I said a ladle. I can't keep on telling you again, yes? There's no lettuce in there. Oh, come on. Excuse me. Get me the soup back from the table. Gordon is very happy with soup. Sorry? Hurry up, Jean-Baptiste, Yeah, apparently not. Please. Yeah, come here. do you find it's funny? You're laughing away. No, no, I want no, the no. fucking <laughs> soup back. Just get the fucking bowl from the table. Let's go, two more pans. What happened there, Miller? Half the table had lettuce, the other table didn't. Get a pan, please. Back up to the boil. Yes. Quickly. And if the oysters are overcooked, Miller, start again. Hurry up. Hello, Hello, ladies. Hello. Oh, you've got the best table in the house. Three oh. ladies all to yourself. I'm a lucky man. Huh? <laughs> Do you enjoy your oysters? It's very good. First time as well. Oh, really? Anything yeah. happening downstairs? Not quite yet. I'll Not leave quite yet. Just <laughs> almighty. Should have happened half an hour ago. I need any help downstairs. Huh? Dear, oh dear. <laughs> How are you, darling? Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas welcome, to welcome, you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, Christmas. Yes. In the Osborne household. Yes. That uh, must be mad, no? It's really... You know, hustle, bustle, hectic, dogs, kids, yeah. the whole lot. And I can imagine Ozzy biting the head off a turkey before it goes in the oven, no? He ends up cooking it. I, he does. He ends up cooking because I can't. I can't believe that he does the fucking cooking in your house. <laughs> What's he like? <laughs> I mean, what kind of things does he cook? Good old English thick chips, he Seriously. does, and they're brilliant. Really? Do you get excited about going out to dinner? With good food, I do. Mm. I really... I, 
you know, there's such a difference between good food and mm -hmm. food. Yeah. Now, it's been well documented, your relationship with food. Bulimia, for instance. It's I mean... a thing of when we all need to eat, and I would need to eat, but I would hate the fact that I needed to eat, so I'd right. want to get rid of it. Yeah. And then I, I just wouldn't feel clean. I had yeah. to just get it out of my body, because it was crap that I was eating. I mean, that's all under control now. That's been... Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Extraordinary. The fact that you look amazing. How do you keep it up? And what was the last thing you had done? Oh, cosmetic? Yes. My boobs. Your boobs? Yeah. But I don't like them now. They're too big, so I'm going to have them changed. Does Ozzy think they're too big? No, he likes them. But they're amazing. You don't need to change them, he likes Sharon. Them. No, they're too big. They weigh a lot. Honestly, Seriously. they do. They weigh a lot. Seriously. And it's like, nah. Really? Yeah. Have you ever had oysters before? I haven't, because I think they look like bogeys. Big but... bogeys. Um, or... Jean-Baptiste, s'il vous plaît. Oh, did you hear that? That accent. Now, I, I don't think you're going to chew. Sharon being Sharon, you're going to swallow. <laughs> Ready, babe? Just have a little smell. It smells like an old fanny. This is a high-quality oyster. You're going to absolutely <laughs> love it. I can't believe you just said that about my oyster. Here you go. I'll take this big one. Ready? So, up, oh, go on. tilt down, finger. Go on. Mm. All right, let's smell your breath now. <laughs> Okay, and the low fat on. as well. <laughs> this one is a little bit smaller, this one. You're okay. Maybe Oysters. turn around the other way because that, oh, that, see, that's okay. just like a, a pearl. That there's to sort of fit onto your mouth. Okay. Can't wait. It feels like a one, testicle. Two. Oh. <laughs> All right. Go on, babe, straight down. Well done. <laughs> and swallow. <laughs> no, no. What was that like? It's oh, like being in be Brighton and taking a mouthful of seawater. Damn, you didn't like that, no? Oh. That's supposed to be an aphrodisiac. He's Aussie in for a good night. Not with this breath, he's not. <laughs> It'll murder him. Next on the menu, the kids get to eat Anthony. And if things go wrong, I'll be stuck with a family of vegetarians. Bye, Bye Anthony. Bye, watch out. Go. I'm off to Harrogate in North Yorkshire to get a vicar's wife back in the kitchen. The freezer is central to my cooking. Give us this day our daily bread. And I leave the commies in charge of the kitchen, so it could be me that ends up stuffed. Is it fuck warm? No, no. No, so do you want to serve that? No, chef. No, get the sprouts off and get them in the fucking pan. Let's go. Yeah. Russell, you're sending table 16? 16. Millie, you're sending table 3. Table 3. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, next up, the main course. Homegrown roasted turkey. Turkey. The one-hit wonder. Um, absolutely amazing bird. Stuff. Onion. Orange. Garlic. Thyme and bay leaf. Season. Truffle butter. This little beauty helps to take the turkey to a different division. These cost 50 quid for that size. Yes, it's expensive, but boy, is it worth it. Don't chop the truffle too small because we want to taste and identify the truffle. Parsley. Tarragon. Salt. Touch of pepper. Tablespoon of olive oil. And that stops the butter from burning. Take your piping bag and fill it. Separate skin from meat. Piping bag in. Pie butter. Massage. Salt. Pepper. Olive oil. Roast. Citrus breadcrumbs. Pancetta. Onion. Thyme. You don't need to try a good old chef's trick and pull down and just peel it off his lovely flowers. Pine nuts. Butter. Bread. Orange. Lemon. And as it starts browning, sprinkle your orange and lemon breadcrumbs. Lemon juice. There we go. Beautiful. Rest. Tin foil keeps it nice and warm and it cools down slowly so the breasts become really nice and moist. Calm. 
What you can smell, of course, is that amazing truffle. Absolutely beautiful. Turkey with truffle butter and citrus breadcrumbs, done. Now, let me show you something quick. Come here. Anthony, Nigella and Dina are all in the oven. Have a quick look. Don't touch. There you go. That's Anthony in there. For the past three months, my kids, Megan, Holly, Jack and Matilda, have been rearing their own turkeys for Christmas. Tonight, they'll finally get to eat them. Wave goodbye, Anthony. Quick, you're in Bye, there. You're... Anthony. Bye, Bye, Anthony. Anthony. Bye. Right, watch out. Go. Right. At the table. Up. At the table. Oh, scary. Come I want to table. see it. He's gone. He's going in the oven. Come on, at the oh, table. Man. Matilda, hup. Dear, oh, dear. Oh. Whew, fucking hell. Now, four minutes on hot plate, yes? So uh, move your ass, yeah? A little bit of energy, yes? Yeah. In fact, lots of energy, yes? And yes, it is a race, Miller. Let's go, Dan. Now, with the turkey, we're serving roast potatoes, carrots and Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts always get a hard time, and we only get to eat them once a year. However, do not put a cross at the bottom like my mum does. When you crisscross the bottom of that, you end up with a soggy, overcooked sprout. Leave them whole. Into the boiling water. And cook for three and a half to four minutes. Then take them out and dump them straight in ice water so it stops them from overcooking. Then we're going to soak them very, very quickly with some almonds. So the sprouts just start to colour and the almonds just start going that really nice nut brown flavour. Now, the roast potatoes that are going with the turkey are charlottes. They're small, rich and very waxy, so you don't need to part ball them before you roast them. And this way, the flavour is extraordinary. Into the pan, season and colour on the stove in goose or duck fat. And if you give the potatoes colour before they go in the oven, you get this really nice, crispy flavour around the outside. Come on, come on, come on. Really important. Now the fingers are moving fast, yes? Come here, you. Don't serve it. Are you happy with that? Yeah, reasonable. You are, yes? Yeah. Haven't even tested it to see if it's warm. Yeah. Should be still warm because this bit's warm as well, Chef. Yeah. Touch that there. Come on, Russell. Yeah, that's not quite warm. Is it fuck warm? No, no it's not. No, so do you want to serve that? No, Chef. No, get the sprouts off and get them in the fucking pan. Let's go. Yeah. So delicious turkey, nice hot potatoes, yeah? Roasted carrots and fucking stone cold Brussels sprouts. Come on. Right, Russell, come here. Miller, come here. That wasn't good enough. Okay. A little bit all over the shop, you know that. You, stone cold vegetables. Your turkey, Carvin, is shocking. How can you call that carved? It's like you've been in there with a fucking shovel. If I had to make the decision on those last two tables there, Russell, you'd be going home. Pull it back. Yes, chef. One table of five each. Let's go again. How about getting the turkey sliced on the tray this time? Yeah. Getting your vegetables piping hot yeah. and plating your turkey and your veg at the same time. Yes, yes? here we go. Yeah. Make it count. Move your ass, yes? <laughs> Clean your fucking plates, come on. Nice portions, piping hot veg. Let's go. Good. Well done, big boy, yes? Yeah. You saved your skin there, big boy. Go, table 12. Nice. Go, please. Come on, Miller. Yes, one. 12, please. Go. I'm going to nip in there. How was Nigella? Breast moist? I have to say, you, you've pulled off the hardest thing in turkey cooking. Really? Which is moist breast. <laughs> With, I'm a turkey sceptic. I you know you are. You're a plucking, fucking finicky turkey grower. I, yes, and, I, and I'm fussy about turkey. Yes. And very, very rarely is it cooked properly. Yes. And that's really hard to pull off. So, Coming from you, Hugh, I'm honoured. Thank you. No, it was really, really good. How do you feel about Nigella being a man? Uh, confused. <laughs> Nigella, a man cared for by Jack, age five. I mean, as a provenance. I mean, I like menus where they talk about the provenance of the yes. meat, you know. Traceability. Yeah, traceability. Yeah. Now, I'll see you later for dessert, yes? I'll see you for the pudding challenge. Yes. How are you feeling about that? I'm slightly nervous. <laughs> huh? Good to see you. 
turkey is lovely and moist. There's a lot of lemon in it. Sometimes I'm not sure about lemon, you know, so much lemon, but I did enjoy it, and I thought that the actual texture of the meat is lovely. And the sprouts are just the kind of el dente that I struggle to get. She said, you're a little dog, hey. Good That's to see boy. you. Oh, what have nice. you noticed different about your sprouts and my sprouts? Actually, Actually, yeah. Harder, not cooked no, excuse me. Excuse me. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, steady. <laughs> Don't you start ganging up on me. There was no crisscrosses on my sprouts. No, there wasn't. No, that's why they weren't what cooked. Happened? So they weren't soggy, Mum. Yeah, we no, served them whole cooked. for once. No, they were hard. They were hard. You don't remember every time Mum served Brussels sprouts? She yeah. served them by the leaves. <laughs> See you shortly. Yes. <laughs> Given it's Christmas, I thought I'd get a vicar's wife back in the kitchen, and believe me, she needed a miracle. Christmas, f for a vicarage family, I would say it's wall-to-wall -wall church. Mark does all the cooking except at Christmas when it does fall to me. I don't think I've ever really learnt to cook. Give us this day our daily bread. The freezer is central to my cooking. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. An alternative Christmas lunch would be, would be interesting. Amen. The ideal Christmas meal for me would be something that could be prepared in advance, that was easily cooked and served, but that also was exciting and that I had done for myself, and I would really love to see the family's face when I put that down. Hello, Ruth. Hi, Gordon. How are you? All right, how are you? I feel like Santa Claus. Great. Very now, glad to see you. Um, Christmas. Yeah. What's the problem? On Christmas morning, I'm up really early trying to um, prepare vegetables or whatever can be done in advance, mm -hmm. which is when I get really stressed. My solution to this, of course, it would be something simple and uh, something like a salmon on crude. Right. You can get prepped. Yes. Go off yeah. to church, mm -hmm. return, cook in the oven. Yeah. Whilst that's cooking in the oven, then you get the vegetables on. That will be done oh. within the time of the salmon being cooked. Fantastic. <laughs> First and foremost important, get the salmon done. So it's just going to be um, layers of salmon, yeah. sandwiched together. Yeah. Between the fillets, there'll be some butter, sultana, some ginger, right. some lemon and thyme. And the nice thing about this particular dish is quite, uh, yeah, it's quite festive. Mm. There's the salmon, it's been skinned, pin bone. Get the butter, paste this all over the salmon. We get the head and the tail yeah. opposite one another. Right. So we lift up the salmon. Place that on there. Any particular reason for that? Or? It's just so it cooks evenly. This is short crust, yeah? Roll the pastry out. Get the salmon onto the pastry. We're going to use an egg wash to stick this together. I want you to brush around the whole rim. Nice. And lift over. On your tray. That goes in the fridge. Excellent. Imagine it's Christmas morning. Right. Salmon's done. Yeah. Big weight off your shoulders. You're back from the church. What's next? Check the oven temperature. Yep. Whack it up. And then get the salmon. Yeah, straight in. And we're going to do like a creamed leek. Ooh, look Looks good. fantastic on the table. Yeah. Tastes amazing. And we're going to season with a little bit of curry powder. Right. Don't worry, a little bit of wash on there, please. <laughs> we don't want any dirty leeks on Christmas Day, do we? <laughs> no, that'll spread like wildfire around here, yes? <laughs> the vicar's wife's got dirty leeks. <laughs> so leeks into the pan. Nice. And it's lightly seasoned with curry powder. Mm. Yeah? Delicious. Cream in the leeks. Right. Job done. Take it out. Beautiful. Nice. Slowly. It feels really meaty. That slice is beautiful. I want you to put the potatoes on. Right. Main ingredient on the left-hand side of the plate. Look at that. Cream leeks. There we go. Right. Now, my dear vicar's wife. Yes? You're a star. Ha you're the star. <laughs> mm. Happy Christmas. Wow! Wow! <laughs> mm. Wow! <Brilliant. laughs> oh, yeah. Can have <laughs> Massive improvement. Oh, now, how was that? Really good. It's very nice. Yes? Yeah. And Ruth, not too stressed out? Very chilled. Fantastic. I've never said this to the vicar before, but get out of the kitchen, yes? And stay in the church <laughs> where you belong. <laughs> uh, New Year's resolution? Get back in the kitchen. Absolutely. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, Ruth. Hi, how are you? Right. Mm -hmm. how are you? Nice, mm. nice to see you. Mark, how are you? Hi, good. You well? Yeah, fine, thank you. Are you feeling less scared now about cooking? Are you... I've done a bit. You've done a bit? I've done a bit. Fantastic. Yes. Tried the pastry again and it didn't stick to the pin. Oh, really? Plenty of flour. That's great news. Fantastic, well done. Nice to see you. Take it off. Mm. Well, Merry bye. Christmas. Bye. Good to see you. Thank you. How's the turkey? It's really nice. Yes? Very nice. 
Um, as you know, it's been my objective to get women back in the kitchen and it's gone very well. Thousands of requests, not just from desperate housewives, but some from men as well. And one that really sort of, I suppose, touched my heart was this man. Sharon happens to be, in my opinion, the worst cook on the face of the earth. She couldn't even make a piece of toast without burning it. Gordon, would you do me a big favour? I'm fed up of having takeaway food delivered to my house. Teach her to cook, um, what would I really like? Lamb chops and mint sauce. He likes lamb chops. Thank you very much. Teach her, please, please. I'm starving. How? When did you do that? It was his plea. It was his message to me to get... Listen, that's one man I definitely don't want to upset. Come on, Mrs Osborne. It's good to have you I'm, in the kitchen. I can do this. Right. I know I can. Now, these are very simple lamb chops. Pan onto the stove. This olive Touch oil. Touch of olive oil. That's right. If I started off with butter, it'll burn too quickly so it goes black. So, a little bit in. Nice hot pan. Rumours has it, OK, that you didn't even realise A, how to work the oven, and B, what it was in your kitchen for. Is that true? You weren't that bad. No, my oven has always had the instructions how to work it still inside, taped to the side of the oven, cos I never turn it on. No, it was my husband's hiding place for his booze, cos he knew I'd never open it. Unbelievable. That's and where he's he used weed. to have his everything, and, everything And his rosemary. Oh, Special yes. rosemary, Moroccan black. Yes. Right, I want you to turn them now. They're ready for turning. There's one thing on there like that and turn it over. Now, be careful you don't... Don't, don't, don't splash yourself. Now... My kids are constantly banging on about me, even at the age of seven, six and five, that I'm embarrassed them every time I go out. Do your kids ever get embarrassed about some of the things that you say and do? Please, my kids have been so... I mean, come on, look at their mum I know, I know, I know. Come on. Can you imagine the old man and me turning up at parents' night at school? I would I love... mean, my kids went through hell and back with us. I mean, their dad turning up in black velvet and all his jewellery for school meetings. Oh, he went to parents' day. Day. And yeah. sports day. Yeah, he used to fall asleep at parents' meetings. He'd Serious. be there snoring, yeah, Serious. honestly. But no matter what, this is the yeah. one thing, no matter what you look like, what you do, every kid is still embarrassed. Really? So you might as well be something yeah. to be embarrassed about. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make a little doggy bag now and take these back. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is keep them wrapped in the tin foil. OK, put a little yeah. knob of butter in there. Yes. And into the oven. Present. And what would be best to serve with that? With that, you know what? A nice mashed potato. You know how to make a mashed potato? Yeah, you get powder and you pour boiling water in it. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to come round Christmas Day, you know that. Uh, I'll have some help. So oh, I'll see you in a minute, yes? <laughs> Next on the menu is dessert time. Hugh Furley Whittingstall takes me on with his chocolate chestnut truffle cake. Suddenly, all your confidence is just sapping away. <laughs> and Sharon Osborne is doing the judging. One of them. I really love, and the other one I do not like. And Giles Corrin finds out why we should eat Christmas dinner every day. They're less likely to uh, become addicted to alcohol, cigarettes, drugs... Yeah, so and... sitting there in front of the TV, eating their TV dinners, basically, they're turning themselves into the crackheads of tomorrow. This table's for my wife, yes, and children. Let's go. One table, I do not want to fuck up. Come on, let's go. Go, go. Up. Wakey, wakey. Stay down, Russell. Yeah. How are you, Meg? Hi. Good. Holly, what do you think? Good. Good, yes. Megan? Nice. Mmm. Jack, what do you think? Good. And you like the brown Delicious. meat as well? Yeah. Matilda, what do you think of Anthony? Nice? Does he taste the way you thought he was going to taste? Oh, uh, no. Oh. I just to have baby chicks. So you want to have turkeys down. back in the garden again? Psst, what about pigs in the garden? Yeah. Pig, let them pigs Little pigs. Let you. Little... Pigs. Uh, what do you think about Matilda's pigs. idea with chickens? Pigs is probably more encouraging. You're happy with the pigs? Yes! yes! Mummy said yes to the pigs. That's fantastic news. I've got to get back to the kitchen. My teacher. Give me a kiss. Yes, we'll take some for your teacher. Give me a kiss. Mm. Where are you going? See you later. <laughs> I'm going back to work. Back in the kitchen. Right, listen, clean plates, yes. Kids? Or no dessert. What's yes? For dessert? Hopefully, chocolate tart. See you chocolate later. Ice cream. Now, this man, Hugh Furley Whittingstall, is going to attempt to beat me with his chocolate chestnut cake. No chance. 
We reckon. And um, what are you doing exactly? I'm going to do a, a, a nice gooey chocolate and chestnut cake. Nice. It should be quite soft and moussey in the middle. Okay. It's one of the things you can, you can literally eat it straight out of the oven as a, as a kind of hot chocolate pudding. Yeah, good. And it'll, you won't even manage to slice it, you just have to scoop it out. Oh, nice. Good luck. Good luck. So I'm doing a very simple, straightforward chocolate tart. No frills, no spills, no creme fraiche, no vanilla chocolate tart with roasted hazelnuts. Um, we're going to make uh, the most amazing pastry. Um, roll it out, line it in this um, flan ring, put the cream and the milk on to boil, add that to my little chocolate buttons. There's a very well-known Elizabeth David chocolate cake that uses ground almonds instead of flour and keeps it lovely and moist and quite fudgy in the middle. This is really based on that, except I'm just using chestnuts cooked in a little cream and milk, mashed instead of the ground almonds, but really it's a tribute to, to her recipe. But it's lovely at Christmas because it's got the chestnuts in. Milk, cream up to the ball, hazelnut praline on top of the chocolate buttons, and then, quite simply, cream and milk onto the chocolate and stir away. Now, the thickening agent of this particular tart are whole eggs. And what the egg does is, as the cream and the chocolate and the milk cook, of course, the eggs help to set it. Lightly whisk up the eggs and fold that in to the chocolate. Now, I'm just going to lightly toast my nuts. Now, Hugh, you're highly competitive, aren't you? Even though you're living in the countryside, you still have that chef's competitive streak in you, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like to win, Gordon. Whoa. No, it's all right. You thought it had all gone horribly wrong for me there, didn't you? I was hoping it had. You know that, Hugh. Yeah. I'd get fired from your kitchen so far. <laughs> when I look at my part. Look at that. Look at... <laughs> oh, my God. Does that actually bring you out in a sweat? I'd be getting clipped round the head if this was... What? I probably am about to be clipped what? by the head. Weren't you fired from the River Cafe for being a messy puppy? Yes. yes. In a word, yes. Bit in the heck. There we go. We're baking the tart blind. That means we're going to line this ring with a pastry and then bake that off first. So that's an added insurance policy that, A, the pastry stays nice and crisp, and, B, all we have to do then is just cook the chocolate filling. So baking blind simply means cooking it twice. Do you miss not being a professional chef running a restaurant? Full time. I don't miss it at all because I was quite no? I was quite a bad professional chef. Really? I just you know I have a bit like Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got the discipline. But what I, what I do now I, I enjoy very much. You know, it, yep. what we do in Dorset isn't really a restaurant. It's more informal than that. It's about telling people where the food comes from. I have a great kitchen team, but it's sort of more of a cookery school than a restaurant. Uh-huh. And um, did you have long straggly hair at the River Cafe? I've always had long, straggly hair. How many times a year do you wash it? I think I'm due for about once a month. Seasonal? Seasonal. Did you have to wear a hair nap? I could be due for my pre-Christmas wash any day now. You're distracting me and you're making me over-whip the egg whites. <laughs> the thing about folding in egg whites is never fold more than you need to, but you do have to get it properly incorporated, which means going deep to the bottom of the bowl and just lifting the mix, and that's it. And in it goes. And that just goes in there for 25 minutes. The really important not to overcook it so that you don't want it to dry out. So, out. Nuts. Sprinkle the nuts at the bottom. Chocolate in. It does look very good. We don't fill the tart right to the very top here. Two thirds of the way in. Open the oven door. And then get the rest of your mixture. And top up the tart. Uh, so that's so you don't have to carry a really full tart over exactly. to the oven. Exactly. So it gets really nice and full. That, that's obviously a very useful tip for chefs who've been drinking too much on Christmas Day. Absolutely. Oh shit. <laughs> I dropped the cloth in it. I've already messed up my pudding. Are you okay? Yeah, I just went in to have a little look and I dropped the cloth. You see, that's why I got fired. Things like that. I dropped the cloth in the middle of my cake. I hope that's a clean one. Now it's all down to fucking Sharon Osbourne, you know that. And, you know, I've got, for the first time in the F-Word series, a proper chef in my kitchen. So well, if there's any time well, now that I really want to win, it's fucking today, Hugh. That's, that's very kind of you to describe me as a chef. I'm not a good loser, you know that. Huh? <laughs> well, you better be. I've got... I'm now in that state of mind where I actually really want to win. Serious? Yeah. Mine's in the oven now. It's got to go in there at 90 degrees for an hour and 10 to an hour and 15 minutes. So it cooks nice and slowly. We can't afford to turn it up any higher than 90, 95 degrees, otherwise it splits and separates. 
and I'm damned if I'm going to lose this challenge. For me, the best thing about Christmas, of course, the food. The worst thing about Christmas, the leftovers. Now, I've come to see a bunch of guys that just can't escape from that unwanted turkey. Doncaster Prison may not be renowned for its good food, but like many prisons, it runs a professionally recognised catering course to help rehabilitate inmates. This is our kitchen, Gordon. Again, with bars on there? Yes. Huh? Flippin' egg. This is a real hell's kitchen. Fucking hell. There are three and a half thousand meals a day going out of this kitchen. Three and a half thousand meals a day? Yes. I'm not too concerned about my dog tag. I'm just concerned the fact that I can get the fuck out of here in an hour's time, that's all. OK, turkey leftover curry. Hello, guys. I'll be cooking with Kirin, Baby, Daz, and Jacko. I'm told they're the keenest cooks on yeah. X-Wing. Serious? <laughs> Rumour has it. Uh, and you're supposed to be a sort of curry expert. Yeah. I won't say an expert. No, yeah. but you love a curry. I like a curry, yeah. Yeah. Curry is the most popular dish in the prison, and it's also a great way to deal with leftover Christmas turkey. So I'm going to show the men of X-Wing how to make a Thai red curry. Uh, red chilies, OK, obviously. Uh, garlic, lemongrass and ginger. Um, have you used lemongrass before? No. No? Cut it in half. OK. Yeah, have a little smell. Lovely. That's really nice and fragrant. Have you, smell, have you smelled that before? Yes, yes. Yes, have a smell that. Lovely. Fresh lemongrass. Beautiful. Well, that'll do, just because it smells nice and sweet. Almost like vanilla. Really nice and lemony and fresh and fragrant. That lightens up the curry. So this is where we make the paste. And the way to mix it now is just get all the ingredients into a blender. We're doing it today with turkey. But, you know, this paste is great if you're making a, you know, a fish curry. Right, there's your onion. Yes, there's my onion. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's have a competition. You know how competitive chefs are, yes? Huh? Right, what do you reckon? We'll take him with the first uh, half, or do you reckon he will be finished before me? He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Right, knife down. The whole thing chopped and ready to go. Right. That's go. Come on, Kieran. First half. Hold on a minute. <laughs> hey. Hey, fancy a job? <laughs> hey, I'm serious. Fancy a job? Yeah. Not 25 quid a week, big boy, 25 quid a day. Yeah. When you out? 2007. OK, 2007. Give me a call and come spend a day with me at the kitchen, OK? Yeah. To make the curry, we fry off the onions, add our curry paste, and then pour in coconut milk for a rich, creamy flavour. Nice. Then, as it cooks down, we add some monge too for colour and a bit of bite. What look called, Gordon, then? They're called yeah. monge too, or snow peas. Snow peas. Snow peas, yeah. It gives a really nice sort of um, texture, and slightly sweet as well. Now the turkey meat, and mix it through. Nice. Keep on mixing that in, my man. Yep. Back up to the ball. Um, now with the rice, we're going to make a, almost like a, um, a sticky rice. And we've got some cream coconut here. And the idea, of course, is to get the rice, cut up the coconut, and then just crumble that through there like this. Yep. Then from there, sprinkle the coriander through there. And what it does, it makes a really nice, fragrant rice. OK, um, 30 minutes of the rice. Yeah. Whilst that's cooking, um, I'd love to go and look where you, uh, where you sleep, in the cell. Excellent. Come on, fucking that's small, huh? Yeah. Huh? Who snores the loudest? <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Me. You? Yeah. And who farts the loudest? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Do you mind if I lie down? That's mine. Yeah. That's yours? Yeah, that's mine, yeah. Come on. Oh, no. Yeah. Huh? That's all right. Don't you think? Yeah, it's quite firm, that, no? That's all right, though. Let me just think. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just dim those lights down a little bit, please, Jackie? Um, how's the rice? Lovely. Hmm. Go on, Tommy. Good. Should we get over there? How are you, big boy? It smells lovely, that yeah. rice. Finished with fresh coriander. Thank you. Yeah? Good man. 
Huh? So what do you reckon then, so far? Yeah, real nice. Yes? Yeah, really nice. What's that putting in, guys? Right, enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. gorgeous. Huh? Yeah? Beautiful. Merry Christmas, big man. Merry Christmas, uh, Merry Christmas, Christmas big man. Uh, not at all. Let me see. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. big man. Huh? Cheers, God. Don't be late. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be late. Look at that. Suddenly, all your confidence is just sapping away. <laughs> You're absolutely fucking right. <laughs> that's ready. That's ready for Sharon. Now look, it's not quite firm, but it. Well, that's it, good, isn't it? You wanted a bit gooey. A little bit gooey. That's right. Wee! Oh, that looks beautiful. It does look very, very nice. Homemade vanilla ice cream. Looks lovely. Mr. Whittingstall, it does look rather yummy. That you know that. I'm slightly concerned that it looks too fucking good. However, it's yes. going to be close, isn't it's it? It's going to be very close. They look great. They both look good, don't they? Can I just... They do look fantastic. Can I just have a little sliver of yours? Yeah, of course. Do you mind? Just a little... It's all right. Mm. Please. All right, and have a little bit of this one. And the cream. Mm. It's very good. It's incredibly rich. OK, Jean-Baptiste, take them over to Sharon. Hope she likes them. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. And hey, listen, remember, if she doesn't, you're fucked. Yes? You're out of a I job. Know. I know that. Yeah? I'm fed up with fucking losing. Hello, Sharon. What How have I you? got? I'm fine. Here we go. So we have two desserts. Yes. So I'll let you try the first one. Mm, I love dessert. It's my favorite part of the meal. Mm, I love to. Me too. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. Have you made your mind on this one? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So this is dessert number two. Compared to the first one. Well, let's leave it like this. One of them I really love, and the other one I do not like. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. You've been working really hard. I've been having a lovely dinner. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm in excited. a state of deep relaxation about this. Hi. Huh? How are you? Sorry, Sharon, Hugh. Very well. This is very tense. You know that. Why? Well, because. Well, I must say that I have heard that your desserts have not been going down great. No. Rumour has it on the street. Yes. Pressure's on. I am the chocolate queen. Are you? Good. Good. Yeah. 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 This is the one that's absolutely and completely fucking wonderful. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And what about this one with the hazelnuts? I would never eat that. <laughs> that is fucking brilliant. Sharon Osborne, <laughs> I did love you. I do love you too. Oh my God. Mm, this is wonderful. Can I finish it? Please now, do. Too? Can I spoon Hugh? feed you? Oh, yes, darling. That was just fabulous. Mmm, Hugh. Yeah. Sharon. Yes, darling. May I? Yes, please. What else do uh, you cook, Hugh? What do you like? Gordon, may what I? Do you like no, to taste? no, you must. Come on. Next on the menu, it's decision time. I give one of the commies the break of a lifetime, a job in my kitchens. The person that I'm going to offer a job to is... And Giles Corrin here's an amazing excuse for eating in front of the telly. <laughs> There's always the excuse, the dog always eats something. That's no good. You eat in front of the telly because the dog at the table. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time to find out what our diners thought about the dessert. Did they agree with Sharon's stupid verdict? Let's go, Russell. Light, moist, chocolatey, gooey yumminess. It's great. The cream that he made with his with the satan was, was fantastic. Very tasty, but a little bit too sweet and a bit too rich. Christmas is hard work, but not for our professional eater, Giles Corrin. He wishes every day was Christmas Day. Oh, well, I wish it could be Christmas every day. At this shopping centre, it's been Christmas every day since the end of October. But what if it really worked? What if we had Christmas lunch every day of the year? Well, presumably, we'd all be fat, broke and miserable because Christmas dinner is famously fattening, expensive and stressful. 
But maybe we've got it all wrong. There's some convincing evidence around that if we ate Christmas lunch every day, we would in fact be happier, healthier and better off. The first excellent reason to have Christmas lunch every day is that it's a meal you prepare from scratch and not a ready meal. That means it's likely to be a lot better for you. Well, if you look at these labels, you see a list of additives and preservatives, and many of them are high in salt and fat. Mm -hmm. So you've got less control over what you're eating. Uh, so, so Christmas dinner is better for us than what people eat every day? Well, if you think about it, turkey breast without the skin is a great low-fat source of protein. You've got carrots, parsnips, Brussels sprouts, a great selection of vegetables, helping you to achieve your recommended five a day. Mm -hmm. But don't smother them in butter, nor salt. That's the key. Steamed vegetables lightly cooked. Then you've got your potatoes. Well, if you keep them large, keep the skin on. Explain. If you keep them large, they absorb less fat. So actually you've got a lower fat potato just by keeping the potatoes large. So a big, floury, not too crunchy potato with its skin on. That the thing. sounds delicious. It certainly <laughs> does. Another potentially worrying thing about eating Christmas lunch every day is that it costs so much money. It is a big family occasion and it is a big meal. So and you, do you think it's more expensive than a normal meal? I, I, I yes. would say yes. I think you always go a little bit extra at Christmas with the food, preparation, everything yeah. else, yeah. But that's where you're wrong, because the second reason to have Christmas lunch every day is that it's actually a bargain. According to the Good Housekeeping Institute, your Christmas food shop actually costs 40% less than your normal food shop. You go to the um, supermarket and you buy all these ingredients, and then when you take them home, you can cook um, one big meal, but then you have leftovers yeah. for everything else. This is the famous turkey curry that I've heard so much about. Exactly. And turkey sandwiches, we... and turkey souffle, well, and turkey we... creme brulee. And That's right. Turkey soup. Turkey pasta, turkey rice, risotto, stir fries, sandwiches. Well, I think that's about enough turkey. The third reason we should have Christmas lunch every day is that it's a meal we eat at the table with our family, unlike the rest of the year. Where do you eat? Do you eat in front of the telly or...? Yeah, at the moment. Because someone, the dog at the table, leaked. Like, <laughs> There's <laughs> always the excuse, the dog always so eats something. Got, That's no good. You eat in front of the telly because the dog at the table. They're not alone. A recent survey found that three quarters of people eat dinner in front of the TV and one in five families only eat together once a week. So why does it matter then? Why, why, sh why should we all sit around together eating a, a freshly prepared meal instead of sitting in front of the TV? I don't see why. Well, if you're sitting down and you're eating and you're, and you're watching television, then you're not speaking to each other. And communication is actually the, the way that we form strong bonds in a family. Is there any proof? I mean, it sounds a nice idea. Is there Absolutely. any proof that it's true? I mean, there, there have been loads of surveys into this particular subject, but there was a really big survey into thousands of teenagers and their parents by the University of Columbia. And that stretched out over 10 years, and it found that it sort of improves children's um, skills communication-wise, their academic skills, they're less likely to uh, become addicted to alcohol, cigarettes, drugs. They're less likely to become addicted to drugs if they sit down to a square meal every night? Yeah, absolutely. So sitting there in front of the TV, eating their TV dinners, basically, they're turning themselves into the crackheads of tomorrow? Well, <laughs> I suppose you could say that. So there you have it. Eating Christmas lunch every day could make you happier, healthier and better off. And best of all, it might make your children less likely to end up on crack. Right, I've got a present for you. Yes? Um, I thought long and hard, um, spent a fortune on it, and something that I've been dying to sort of give you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Merry Christmas. Is heavy? Yes. You <laughs> wanker. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to get you more notice now, make you look a bit taller. Try them on. Hey. I've already got a pair. Uh, no, no. <laughs> because... <laughs> oh, no. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> give the audience a twelve. Give, them, give a little tell over there. Give us a... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yes. Tonight, the F-word commies have been fighting out for a job in my kitchen. How are you? Totally shit in it. Didn't think I did myself justice. Well, we all make mistakes, trust me. Uh, how are you? I, I really enjoyed being in the, in the kitchen. It was, um, yeah, it was the hardest it's been. It all began three months ago when I scoured the country to find new chefs with promise. Over a thousand applied, we shortlisted 12. Now, what in the fuck do we have here? Each week, two commies have gone head-to-head -head in the F-word kitchen. Now two remain, but only one of them will get a job with me. Russell, he's creative, quietly confident, and he has flair. Good. Well done, big boy, yes? But sometimes his judgment is off. Taste it? You tasted it? Yes, chef. Yeah, and? I think it's okay, chef. Pasta's overcooked. Stop. 
If I don't win, I would be absolutely gutted. Miller. She's a fast learner, confident, and she has an eye for detail. One minute, Chef. Yeah. They're nicely sourced. But the big question is, can she cope with pressure? Having got this far, I really want to win this. Miller, look at the bass. That's going in the bin. Where's your passion? There, there's a lot of passion. Well, I hope you realise by now um, that I'm obsessed with all things food. People look at me and tell me I'm crazy. Why do you want to do this? I, because of the food, because I want to work with food, because I want to cook. So you're not really just posh totter. You really want to cook for a living. I really want to cook for a living. You really want I to really cook really for a living. I really want to cook for a living. Yeah. Describe your day. Today I felt that I've done crap, to be honest. I just didn't perform. I felt... But you've got to be enough. able to take the pressure. And when the shit hits the fan, it hits the fan. Yeah. And my reputation's at stake as yeah. well. If you can't handle this this evening, and you made so many fuck-ups, what's it going to be like when you're in a real serious kitchen? Well, that's why I'm wanting to have that opportunity to try and get myself up to scratch. I feel that you're a person that can actually iron me out. Anyway, uh, my conclusion to you both is you've come a long way. I have to base my decision on individuals that can absorb more, be pushed more, and ones that can become stronger under more pressure. And the person that I'm going to offer a job to is Camilla. Well done. Thank you. And well done to you. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. And well done to you. Yeah. Yes? Don't give up. Yeah. Keep cooking. Stay yeah. focused. Yes? Yeah. And push yourself. Yeah. Well done. Cheers. Thank you. Well done. Cheers. Well done. Do it. Oh. Well, well done, you my girl. Thanks for watching the F Word. Hope you enjoyed your meal. Please, please keep cooking. You've got to eat, so you might as well eat well. Happy plucking Christmas. As a chef, oh, oh, oh. welcome back. Fucking hell. Oh, that fatty. God almighty. Oh, oh. my ass hurts. Welcome back to the F Word, the food show that puts your mouth fuck off. That's shit. Fucking bullshit. Oh, bollocks. bollocks. This is the health hazard! This is all about fucking bullshit. Sorry. Bollocks. Flipping egg. Fuck it. Shit. Fuck that shit. I'm going a little bit fucking loop the loop. Thank you for watching, bollocks.